trick. That's gonna make y'all have some more, and then you're gonna I realize the trick. It. You're gonna realize that's the what trick. I, that's mm -hmm. what I said. My love. Uh, you see how chill ice was? I am. Uh, was my, like my, yeah, yeah, all the way, just like that. And then this little two year old, he came out the room screaming, trying to fight. My little love. All good, man. I appreciate it, y'all. My little love. My little granddaughter, right? Yeah. She, uh, that's my first grand. I got three grand. Yeah, that's the first girl. Uh -huh. And and her mama, they think it's so easy because she's so good, you know, not not whining, not mm -hmm. crying. I take her and she ain't. I said, yeah, that's the trick. That's how they get you, man. You think that's you want some more? That second one's going to be a monster. <laughs> well, actually, man, I got away with it all of my kids except for number eight. And I knew, really? I, knew I screwed up. <laughs> I screwed we was up. about to get... Uh, Fixed, you know. Fixed. You're not an animal. No, like yeah, I was gonna fix myself. And then it was like an incident occurred. She's like, oh, you broke. I know I'm pregnant. I was like, okay, whatever. <laughs> and then a week later, <laughs> and every day since she threw up, she threw up every day till she had that baby. Oh, and then the baby, yeah, so she, there was like a, a like, foreshadow. Was, yeah, it was like, bad. man. Yeah, and then he turned out to be like the bed. Oh man, that's what I see. Because I was just tired. I wasn't emotional or anything. I was just tired. Really? He's already picking himself up, dude. I know, that's good. Like, like, Stop. literally, like, like doing crunches. Was, yeah. No, let him keep tired. doing it. I'll show you. This, we, this, we this, is, what this is what it is. This is what it is. Yeah, his fucking ass is probably sore as hell right now. His ass. Right we were trying to get him some little four pack. We're getting ready when he starts picking himself up. Oh yeah, wait till he starts throwing himself over the, the <laughs> thing. <laughs> oh man, that's too much for you. Y'all gotta enjoy it. So this is what happens when they try to pick themselves up. Mm. That ass yeah. like over with big old shoulders. Yeah. And he looked, he was right, like three months right, right there. Yeah. He was like three months right there. Yeah, he's, he's actually, Doctors say he's probably gonna be six feet. As soon as they told me that, I said I need a DNA test. Yeah. Six feet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is a How do they know? at one. That's crazy, right, man? Oh my old. god. He's a boy for real. Man, oh, he's so nuts. boy. Isaac had him doing pull-ups. He did. Like I saw him do ten of them. I'm like, he sucks. I was gonna sucks. get mad at Isaac, That's and then I was scary. like, oh. okay, never mind. <laughs> you gonna do that thing? Hmm? Oh yeah. No. I'm gonna be like, so carry on. Yeah, scared. I mean, I was like, Saint. Saint. Yeah. Oh, like, New Orleans Saints? Yeah. yeah. That's a good name right there. But yeah, yeah. buddy. You like that, Papa? You like that? Huh? Huh? <laughs> oh, I love to see them things happen like that, man. Things are happening. Yeah, it is a trick. That's why I said, like, I was trying to trick me. That it's gonna be okay. That'll be alright. If I get a girl's neck, like, he ain't gonna have problems. Ooh. Hey, and here's the worst part. If she does do that, he gonna learn from her. Like, my, my four-year-old, yeah. she was great. Uh, and I'm talking about an angel. Yeah. And because he came out crazy and fighting and everything else, now she fights him and she talks crap to him. <laughs> I'm like, man, what was yeah, princess? Yeah. If we have a girl and she's like Marlon, she's gonna bully him. Yeah. For sure, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and then he's <laughs> gonna start taking up for himself, and now you're gonna uh, have two more. <laughs> Man, that's my fear right there. Having two Martins in the house? God. <laughs> Savage. That's it. So fucked. I'm, a, I'm oh. an old veteran, bro, and I'm going to tell you something, man. Them girls, bro, that's the one. You, you get stuck. Is they like that for you, eh? Like, I can't even be rough on the girls, so they, they hook me. And that's the ones that break your heart, bro. Mm, yeah. And not in a bad way. I'm just saying. Because they figure it out. Life, life, and every every father has an image of what they want their daughter, but that's not even realistic. Mm -hmm. So then the daughters grow up and become women and stuff, and you like, <laughs> you know, the dudes, you to treat them just the way you treat them. You get real close to them, right? Oh, yeah. man. That's I, what I was telling him I wanted. You should see his, oh. you should see his Facebook. You know, little granddaughter? Yeah. That's all I seen now. I used to see all kind of family pictures. Not anymore. Yeah, I'm a little Because <laughs> I was super close to my dad growing up. So I was telling him, like, I want him to have a girl so he can understand that connection. It's, it, 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 it's real. It's special. It's real special. And it's 
the dad, you end up having to grow, right? Yeah. Which I understand because the young fathers I always see say, yeah, I got my gun ready and all this old nonsense. You sitting there going, young dummy, you don't even understand what's going to happen. He to got me. that gun, but she got the clip. Well, you're going to cause problems with your, you and your daughter with that stuff. You need to treat them, you know, my experience anyway. You need, to, you need to treat them as human beings. Yeah. Hey, we're going to do the same thing, man. All right. I could be wrong with my own Can I get that uh, one of those carrots in there? What? One of those carrots? Yeah. Vegetables? Yeah. We got plenty of them. You don't want them to happen. You smell them, dude. No, not for Yeah, yeah. I know. I'm trying to get on the diet and somebody do that. Like, is that your beer? I'm used to it. I mean, food. I like it. Growing up, my family was not healthy. Okay, we're about to go uh, live. She said, I don't know nothing, so is there anything I ain't supposed to ask? Oh, no, it's fine. Anything's fine. Alright, we'll do it. Alright, so we're going to have to go live. Hey guys, this is Coach Derek. And it's Manny. We are live at the Ryan Boxing Academy this morning on the Soap Boxing Podcast. We are excited to have a special guest, Marlene as far as in the house. Hi. Can I uh, you no, you, if you want, you you can, if you need to hit, then we uh, we appreciate you coming in. We're excited to have you. Oh, in. No problem. Thanks uh, for having me. Absolutely. How uh, how was the drive in? It was good. It was long. Cause I'm in Pasadena now. I was in Houston and downtown, uh-huh. and we made our way to Pasadena because we were living in a townhome for like three stories. Right. And I can't be, I was like six months pregnant trying to get up and down the uh, steps and then the baby, so I was like, no. But you're from Pasadena, right? Uh, well, I was from Houston, but I was passing in high school. Okay. And that's why people get confused. Oh, okay. So my, you're from Houston. Yeah. Just my home. dad didn't like the high schools because everyone, you know, and he was uh-huh. like, I was crazy growing up. So he thought if he put me in a worse place, I'd get the worse. <laughs> so I went to Pasadena. <laughs> and, smooth, uh, smooth, smooth. <laughs> yeah, so I went to Pasadena and he was hoping that would help me out. But um, it was pretty, the track was cool, right. you know. Well, today's episode is brought to you by What's Your Favorite Food Truck. If you uh, food truck to get your events, uh, you can talk to them at whatsyourfavorite.com. And uh, who's in here with you today? My name is Coach AB. Um, Coach Rudy couldn't make it, so he made sure that Marlene's number one fan come go. in here with yeah. her and support her. We're about to have a beef right here. What's that? He, he said he's the number one Oh, number one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> when, uh, when you, when you reached out to me, I said, man, you're going to get my little What? For real? You, you <laughs> see the little ad? The little ad? <laughs> I can't, man. She's coming in. And I said, yeah, man. He's a uh, super yeah, fan. Well, you know, I've been following you for a long time. and just I'm super excited. Uh, big fan. Mm-hmm. Of what you are. I appreciate that. Olympics to, to what you're doing now. It's always uh, cool when people from like Houston like, follow me. Because I'm like, yeah, you know. Because everyone yeah. knew me here. And then I branched out when people like, Say that they've known me versus just getting to know me. It's cool because, like, yeah, you know me. Right. Um, it took a lot of work. Right. Everyone's like that tells me that, like, before the grind. Yeah. Everybody thinks that everything was like kind of given to right. me, and it was like, man, guys, I've been in the gym for a long. That's time. insane. You know, people, how people formulate a, a, a your who you are, and they have no clue. They have no clue. I, I, we met one time. I was about a hundred pounds lighter. <laughs> Quentin, Quentin was on like his second fight, third fight, and Rudy, you and Rudy was at the show. You wasn't fighting. Oh, see, and you was here. Are you here? No, no, this was at... Uh, Fighter Nation. No. Do you remember when Green's Point used to have shows? Not not in that gym, though. In the mall? Yeah, it yeah, wasn't yeah, in that yeah. gym. It was just like a cornered off section. They used to do shows. Yeah. And that was the first time I met you and you was... I heard y'all playing about the Olympics, and that's what you was trying to do. This was years ago, man. Yeah. And she was a sick fire back then. Uh, so, can't take no shit. So, where do we start? So, you grew up in here. I mean, you, you grew up in Houston right. before you moved out to Pasadena. Right. Uh, when did you know you want to be a boxer? I knew really early that I wanted to be a boxer. So, probably like, as far as I can remember, it's like the earliest memories of being a kid. Because my dad was a huge boxing fan. So I remember watching boxing with my dad. So every Sunday, because my dad worked a lot, and he would always um, travel out of town. So when I, so I was about 11 years old, my dad was always outfield, so he'd always be gone. Uh, but growing up when he was home, we would always go to the flea markets on Sundays. 
and there was a guy who had all the VHS tapes for boxing, and we would get like a new one every Sunday, and we'd watch it, and all like the thing that we did. Wow. And then my dad used to invite his friends over to drink, and they had little boys that were the same age as me and my little brother, and we would put the gloves on, and I would beat everybody <laughs> up. And they used to do it for fun, because they thought it was funny that I was the one beating everybody right. up. So they would get drunk and just tell us to fight. So were you an only child? No, okay. I was just really close to my dad. I was just talking okay. about that. Um, my sis I have an older sister, an older brother who passed away, and then me and a younger brother. And it was me and my little brother who they had fight and against the uh, boys that would come over. So <laughs> as far as I can remember, I was boxing. It really sounded like to uh, Ella Hoyas back when his parents used to get together and fight all the kids. Well, I, us too, but the same thing. You know, you get the kids together, get the gloves, and, and, and but she was whooping everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And no, you're, you're, I used to lose sometimes. <laughs> your other siblings, they don't box. No, no one's even really athletic. Yeah, no one even really does anything that just has to do with the gym. Uh, my little brother went to culinary school. My sister's, um, what she like, sells uh, material for like project manager type. Okay. And my older brother managed rock bands. So oh, everybody okay. was kind of their own thing. Yeah. And I just really liked boxing. And wow. I, I, I'm not really even athletic, to be honest with you. I think I just made myself athletic. I can run for a long time, but I can't jump to save my life. You know, if someone right. says, like, jump on this box for a million dollars, I'd fail. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And then so, that proves it. There we go. <laughs> so, who, who, uh, when you're growing up in that game, well, I always remember Salvador Sanchez was my ultimate. Because before my dad let me box, he was always trying to get my brothers to go to boxing gym. And then I would always be watching boxing with him. My dad loved Chavez. So he even used to say that I used to call boxing Chavez. So he'd say, Chavez is on, Chavez is on, but it was just boxing. And um, I remember one time uh, my dad had gotten the VHS of Salvador Sanchez. And he's like, well, you got to watch this guy, da da da. He's Mexican, he was really good, and Tony had passed away. And then I watched it, and it was like, this light bulb went off on my brain. Cause he, I was like, oh, like, it was like God talking to me because he didn't box like a Mexican. So they, that oh. typical style, and that's what I was used to, and that's what I thought what I was gonna see. Right. And all of a sudden I saw like a Mexican Sugar Ray Leonard, you know, it's completely different. And I, um, I really liked that style. And I remember it like shocked me and took me a long way. What, what was the, uh, the first gym you went into? Uh, the first gym I went into was in Pasadena. It was a, uh, I think it was, it was Pueblo. Have you heard of Pueblo boxing yeah. now? Yeah, yeah, it was his gym. So he started in Pasadena, and it was like this big old warehouse. I think they were just trying to make money because it was like a bunch of kids, and they were just in sections, and no one was really getting paid attention to, except for a group of five guys that Rudy was training. Rudy was training five guys with his brother. Rudy was at yeah. the gym, okay. And um, he was training, Rudy was training five guys with his uh, with his brother. And I remember I was thinking like, everybody just looked like cattle, you know, just like moved <laughs> around, like jab and jump the rope or whatever. And I kept watching Rudy and I was wondering like, why are those guys so good and how come I wasn't over there with those guys? Man, so it became you, a thing. You uh, being a gym owner and, and a trainer for so many years. That's a necessity too, though. I mean, don't you can't because it weeds the people out like her. Yeah. You, you wanted to be with those guys <laughs> instead of with these guys because the cattle they need to be there too. They need to be exercising and, and you know community outreach. But the fighters they want to distinguish themselves. Yeah. Yeah, I was in, I got lucky because uh, Rudy's brother Oscar, his older brother. He doesn't, uh, he started training me first actually. So he walked up to me and he's like, oh, you look like you know what you're doing. But it's like to practice in my room all the time, just by myself, thinking that Shadow I knew what I was it. doing. Yeah, but I know God, I, didn't wish, <laughs> I don't ever want to see what that looked like. But anyway, <laughs> probably horrible. And uh, he, he was like, oh yeah, and he was telling Rudy that I was kind of good, but Rudy didn't pay attention. And then after a while, I kept asking Rudy and his brother if I could go over there and set up with the group. And they said if I quit consecutively, then I would, then they would let me. And then um, Rudy threw me with his older brother for a while. And then after a while, Oscar told Rudy, like, I don't, I can't, 
her back to her anymore. Like, I don't know anymore. Like, no, I yeah, I can't do anything for her anymore. So Rudy was like, okay. And he said, hey, How I, old were you then? I was point. probably a, uh, turning 12. Oh, wow. I was turning 12. Um, because the first, my very, very first fight, Oscar was in my corner with Rudy on the side. And then my second fight, Rudy was in the corner with Oscar on the side. And um, it kind of went from there because I, Rudy took me on and said that if, if I was going to train with him, that he wasn't going to treat me any different. Right. And everything got real serious after that. Like, I got real serious after that. I Did you know at that point, okay, I had something? No, I think I, none of that really, it's funny because none of that really hit me. I was just really like love boxing. Awesome. And I really did, and, and I can tell now because I'm already, you know, uh, almost 29 years old and done so much. Like, yeah, and and, it, and the the passion doesn't leave me. Right. Like sometimes I, I don't, you know, there's been years of my life where I'm like, why do I want to do this? <laughs> I'm like, stop it, Merlin. Right. I'm like, leave it alone, go do something else. But every time I would try or even go that direction mentally, I'm just not happy. Like, I just love boxing. It's always been that way. I've always just loved it. People, the people ask me, like, if you, because I've been really successful, and there's been times where I could have stopped boxing. And people were like, well, if you win the lottery, like, would you stop boxing? Right. And I was like, yeah, I would just be a lot less stressed, you know? But I would still do boxing. Right. And that's kind of, back to your question, that's kind of what happened. I just loved what I was doing. And then after a while, after a while, you know, I turned 16 and I was supposed to go to Rice. So I had a scholarship. Uh, my academics were okay, and were, they were good, but not rice good. Right. And my running was good, but not rice good. But together, it was. So you were you were better go to rice. To run. Yeah, to run the rice. And then when I was perfect. applying, perfect. You need that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I was because like, I was a really good runner. I'm really good at running yeah. too. Um, like I'm right now, just running. I'm like four or five minutes short of Olympic time for that for like half for like thirteen. 13.1. So I was really good, and um, they were going to take me on. And then all of a sudden, I was applying to all my courses, and I was talking to the professors about my boxing and what I was going to, like, when I had to take off because there was tournaments lined right. up. And I was already on, like, the national level because when I turned 17, I was already fighting with the girls. And they were like, there's no way that this is going to happen. You have to travel for the team. Our academics are way too difficult, and there's no way that there's no way possible that you're gonna, we're going to be able to let you go. So I had to make a choice. Yeah, and Rudy was like, you're crazy. You need to go to school. And my, he was, everybody was like, what are you talking about? Like, And my dad was mad, still mad at me. He didn't talk to me for like three months. Oh, wow. And he was like, you need to get a job. And you need to do this. And he was so pissed. Yeah. You're and, not going to go to school. Mm -hmm. Typical yeah. Mexican. Yeah. Um, you're not going to go to school. You're going to get a job. Yeah, and then because I took him to campus, to the Rice campus, to just do all my stuff and he was looking around Excited. and he was so happy to, wow. yeah and yeah. when I was like I'm not doing it because I need a box he was just like so <laughs> mad at me and we weren't even allowed to be your fault. You got me turned on. yeah <laughs> and he was like uh we weren't even allowed in the Olympics yet I was only 17 uh -huh. and we didn't get a, they didn't announce that we were allowed in the Olympics I was 19. so there was a, a good year of like gray area and it was really sad time too because I was like man I hope I'm right you know, because all my all, all my friends right. were telling me like what they were doing, right. and I was like living a new life, and I was kind of just in limbo a little bit. And then um, I just kept winning, kept fighting that year, and then I won my first nationals right when I graduated high school. And then it kind of just took off from there. When they announced everything, just went just went crazy. And they uh, they first Olympics, they only had what. Three spots, three weight weight classes. Yeah. So it was even more. It was intense. Uh, slim, slim a chance to, to make it and stuff. Yeah. yeah it was intense because at first there was rumors that they were gonna. I was 106 then, and there was rumors that they were gonna let 106 into the Olympics, which is 48 kilos. And when they announced 112, I remember I was so upset. So I was like, these girls are so much bigger than me. And then the 119, the 110, 114, 119. 125. They were all deciding if they wanted to go to 32 or 12. Right. So I had a lot of girls where I was friends with that were world champions, that were national champions, that where I was like, man, I'm gonna have to fight all these girls. And um, everyone thought I was gonna lose. I remember there was reporters and uh, people interviewing and all the blogs. Right. I just stay off the internet. I remember because it was like 
yeah, that I was good and I was fast and I was on my fourth nationals, but that I just wasn't strong enough for everybody else. I want to touch on that real quick. As, as you know, your level of success keeps growing and you have a fight coming up. How hard is it? Do you have to take yourself off the internet because of all the extra noise that you might hear or people talking or chatter? Or, oh, yeah. How, how does that affect you? I'm yeah. off the internet. I hate social media. Yeah. I do. I hate <laughs> it. And the funny thing is, I catch 22 because it's how. I promote myself, right. that's how I get people to know me. Right. It's kind of how I introduce myself to the world, but at the same time, I can't stand it. Like a necessary evil. Yeah, yeah. Right. And, it, right. and it's hard for me, because I'm not, I've never been a, I've never been a social media person. Right. Like when I, my Facebook, I've never even been on my Facebook. Uh, Instagram, Twitter, I had to get those, because when I got sponsors, they told me I had to have them in order to be signed. Uh, so to have it and all the negativity and the expectation and uh, and then also I see girls that are trash that like everybody thinks are good and it's like it boggles my mind. They have and a big following. Yeah, they have a huge following, you know, and it's like they're so good and it's like no, you really just show your tits everywhere. It's basically what's going on. And how, how do you handle that, that lady, you say. right? How, how do you handle that because? I can't just say that. I come across the wrong. <laughs> and when, they, when they're showing their body and they put some clever quote, they copy somewhere. Yeah. I'm like, you're just showing me your, your, your naked ass. Yeah. You ain't, you ain't, your the ass quote don't matter. Your gloves and the Gandhi quote. And yeah, like, yeah, you're yeah. such a good fighter. Yeah, it's yeah. like, man, really? How, how, do you, how do you deal with, you've been growing up in Houston, right? You, I'm sure you have all, well, the majority of the, the, the city supporting you and always encouraging you. But when you get more at a national level, I'm sure there's a lot more hatred. Yeah. There's more, and it's not so much hatred, but just people just being yeah. negative. Yeah, and it's people that don't know, people that maybe they're new to boxing or they're not into boxing at all, or they're not for women's boxing, or they're for but another like, women's but, boxer. But, but we're human, and it bothers us, right? Because we hear it. Yeah. How do you how do you deal with that? I really just try to like remember. It depends on who, what, when, where, right. and why, you know. But for the most part, I just try to remember that no one has any idea like what I've done and how I've done it. Because like a lot of people think that I didn't suffer or that right. like I'm the girl next door. Everything was handed to you. Yeah, like I'm just like this cookie cutter girl right. that, you know, my parents had tons of money and I just decided to box for fun and look at me, I'm sponsored. Right. And it doesn't work that way. You know, like I grew up in the hood and I, I'm like, girl, like, I will catch you. <laughs> like, I will catch you. And it, you know, I'm not like, it's, so I have to be careful with myself. Right. Because some people come at me like, they don't expect me to really bark back right. or do anything. And it's really the opposite. Sometimes I'll go overboard, so I just gotta be quiet. Well, I've seen, I really think I bring that up because I've seen you in a where, you know, either a reporter or somebody else will try to get a reaction out of you. And you say, cool. Like, you're like, yeah, you know what? Hey, yeah. I'm not gonna that. I really just try to stay chill because the times that I have, you know, really just, I get, cause I take it personal yeah. when I get angry. And uh, the time that I have I, after what I've done, I'm like, I should have just chilled out because I was way too pissed off at the time. I have, you know, I have a quick fuse, like a firecracker is just gone. So before before we move on, I just want to say what I heard her say a while ago, I really appreciate She saying that she really don't get on Facebook. She just has it to use it because for years, oh, you did great, Marlon. You don't know me, but I just want to blah, blah, blah. And I look. I waited a couple weeks. You know. That I was even wearing you. Yeah, man, I'm talking about, I'm talking about years worth. I was like, oh, I could ask him a question a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now that she's going all that better. That's how she was. Sorry. No, no, Facebook's not for me. I still don't even know how to use it. You know what it is? Twitter and Instagram, I do. You know what it is, though? And and because you're human, you do certain things and get stuck in your crawl. But these things gave the uninformed a platform. So by the time you mix in fans of another person, and you being a woman, I can't imagine, uh, has nothing to do with your boxing, is what they think you look like or what they don't think you look like. You know? So the uninformed have, has a voice, and sometimes they come in bunches, in so groups. Groups of dummies, right? So the groups of dummies, they they going to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can have that. <laughs> groups of dummies say, they, they find a, 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 a subject matter they agree upon, right? So then they just want to hit each other. To, and if you would get hot at them, you know, they all keep swarming. it'll come even more. And plus, 
What does the uninformed know? How can they know anything? Yeah, you don't know what it takes. Part of the reason we started this podcast, I said, man, you know, people are going to get to see fighters other than their favorite team and stuff. They're going to get to see these fighters like human beings, man. It's a lot of work. If you think if you think it's hard to make the NFL, which certainly it is, right? What is 100 players on each team? Time, however many teams. You know how hard it is to become number one world champion in a fist fight? So you got to realize, man, they have lives. They have mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, husbands, children, or wives, children. And I think, I think what we're doing also here, and I think why we get good feedback is because, you know, maybe maybe somebody who was saying, ah, I'm all in, then they listen to us speak and say, oh, I didn't know that. You know, you didn't, I, I didn't realize she was from the neighborhood or whatever the case may be. Because I remember, that even even me being a fan, the, the channel was when you started with the Olympics. Oh, man, they just pushing her, and I'm, and I'm going. I seen the girl at the local tournaments and, and fighting, which is, she's doing the same thing they did. You know, give her everything she can deserve. Everything she wins, give it to her. But the uninformed don't know, man. They have no clue. They have no clue you're a real person. You just a picture on, yeah, on Facebook or whatever. You just a picture. Yeah, that's what that's my baby, by the way. For the uh, three <laughs> months old. He's three months old. Yeah. So that bounce back was real. It, it, how, how? Yeah. How is the bounce back? You, 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 were, you were pregnant for nine, ten months. Yeah, I was pregnant for. I felt like forever. Ten months. <laughs> well, 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 at the end. Of, at the, yeah, it's actually longer than they say. Yeah, it's ten months. Yeah, it's longer than they say. Yeah. Oh, it's like the way that they. Uninformed? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to argue. Because <laughs> no. it's really like 40 weeks or yeah. whatever. Mm-hmm. I was confused the whole time. So I was like, so when am I having the baby? Right. I can't figure it out. By the time, but if, if the baby comes at full term, sure. it's, it's 10 months. Yeah. 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 That, that, uh, did you guys, uh, you from, you from Houston? Houston, yeah. yeah. You, man, you was right in the middle of everything. It seemed like me on the outside. Just yeah, finding social media and, and knowing your trainer was 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 that a plan or no? No, see what the baby was planned, but the thing that I was thinking was, look, we were talking about maybe having a baby, right? And then I was like, well, because everything's always boxing, right? right? Well, let's see boxing, and I was like, well, we can have a baby after I win my first world title, right? right. But then I, because I'm used to the box, to the to the pros and everything, and I just started to kind of observe and figure everything out. And I was like, well, if I don't defend it, then they're going to take it from me. Mm-hmm. And then I have to do everything all over. And then once I do everything all over, and once I've noticed once a fighter gets to the top and then hits bottom and has to go back up again at the pros, it's a lot more difficult the second time around. And at, at, at that, regardless of what it's for, whether I lost the fight or I got pregnant, it doesn't matter. The point is that I'm not in the public eye. So I figured if I'm going to have a baby, uh, I should do it now because it, it is, it was simply where I'm at, bad timing, uh, what really wasn't good timing, and I was nervous <coughs> about it, but I figure after I have a baby and I get everything cleared up and I get my my family together and I get everything personally for me so I can be happy as a person, right. then I can just continue to grow on that letter again and it'll be easier for me the first time around than having to go to the top, drop all the way to the bottom, and then prove myself all over again. That's incredibly critical thinking, man, because... That makes all the sense in the world. And they will take it from you. You know, you're not fighting for a year. They will take it from you. Yeah, and then whoever's champion could be like, oh, yeah, sure, you just had a baby, right? Like, I don't even beat them. You just because they know that I can beat them. Man, they can that was use that. <laughs> you know, that was, that was that well thought out. Just use it as a, like, against me versus for me. And now I can say, hey, look, I had a baby. Um, Mom's going to do it, too. You, still, you never fell out of public because... Everywhere we looked up, <laughs> man, Marley, I felt like I did. Get in the pads. You know, I was in the gym. I know I was working out. Now I'm like, man. I know. I look nuts. at those videos and I'm like, oh my god, I can't believe I did that. But I had to because I was so scared. Because um, the thing about me as a fighter is, I, I know who I am, and I'm the type of fighter who I, I have to stay in the gym. I have to because some people can get out, and come back, and they'll look just fine, you know? And I'm not like that. If I'm not in the gym and you see me, you can tell, right? You're like, you can tell, like, yeah. man, have you ever boxed before? Like, you look a little rusty, you know? 
So I was really nervous about taking so much time off and like losing my timing that badly because I still lost it. But if I hadn't been there, oh God, I can only imagine it took me like a whole year. And the baby's only three months old. Yeah, and you months. you got a, a fight next week on the twenty fifth. Yeah, and I lost like sixty five pounds or yeah. something like that. Yeah. So let me let, let me tell you something. Let me tell you from what I saw. So when, the last time I saw her before the baby, it was probably like three or four days before she went to the hospital. And I'm talking about, I'm looking at her and Coach Reed doing this. I'm looking at her workout. I'm underneath the ring just watching like, this is unbelievable. This is history in the making. Right. So I'm thinking about it, I'm like, man, you know, we'll see how long it takes for her to come back. Right. Because as a father of eight kids, I know how hard oh, it is for a woman to have a baby. Mm, so I was like, in no way she's gonna come back that quick. What the doctor say? The doc I'm sure the doctor was all for the exercise before. Yeah, no, he uh, was a, we got a really good doctor and he knew what was going on with me and my boxing and we tried to do as much as we could to like make everything smooth and watch the weight, watch the baby's weight and all that. But he really, we ended up having to have a C-section which was not what we wanted to do at all. Wait a minute. Yes, that's what I didn't want to say. That's what I didn't want to say. Well, I was going to ask. So as soon as you got, I was going to ask. Yes. Oh. It's not just a pregnancy. Literally cut Dude, over. My wife, the, the last one, she had, she had never had it. She was laid up, bro. Yes. Like, done. Like, 14 days up. later. Yeah, it was hard. It was hard. I was I was, I was, was still, because I know my body so well because of boxing. Mm -hmm. I, I still kept doing stuff, but I just kept to see what could I do. Right. And then once I felt weird, I'd be like, hold on. And there was one, oh, maybe once or twice where we left the gym, and I was freaking out, and I was like, man, babe, I don't know if I should have done that. I don't feel too good, it feels kind of weird. Right. Then I get home and I chill out and it's fine. And it was kind of just that uh, weird up and down trying to figure out what my body was doing. And slowly and surely, I just it just progressed. And I did start working out a little bit earlier than I should have, according to the doctor. Right. But I didn't tell him because then he was not going <laughs> to. That's, yeah, that's a I theme on this show. Every fighter don't fighters. tell the doctor. Yeah, we've, had fighters, we've had fighters that come and had broken backs. <laughs> don't tell the doctor. Uh, <laughs> broke, uh, broke car, car noses, accident. Noses is the least of the It's because you don't want to hear what you already know. Uh, you know, you don't want to hear what you already know. It sounds like, to me, drive what you have and if you could bottle that and sell it I know a bunch of people I, that I think, buy I think it. not only drive I think that's borderline obsession I think you got, yeah that's got to be borderline obsessed with I think I am sport. obsessed yeah. I think I am obsessed and it's hit me harder now that I'm older because when you're younger it's, there's not you're still growing and learning right. life and trying to figure out who you are and what you're doing there's a lot you know to life and it's if you don't focus too much on it but once it became the primary thing in my life and I was already settled into where I was going, who I wanted to be, and I kind of knew myself, and I realized that, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm borderline obsessed. Sometimes I'm like, I don't know if it's too healthy, but it works for me. Right. You know? No, you can try. <laughs> that's your try. Any, 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 that's what's any legend or great, in any, in any arena or any sport or anything, whether it's in business, whether it's in sports, whether it's whatever, they're, they're dead. Borderline obsession, OCD, like just psycho brutality, where you're like, it's got to be done. I got to do this. That's what's going to allow her, and I'm sure it has already. That's what's going to allow her to face adversity when it comes. So I'm gonna be back watching as a fan, and and if something happens, I'm gonna be like, ooh, it's alright, watch. watch. Even if she's going through a nervous breakdown at the time, watch. watch. That's right. That's a man. That's phenomenal. You, you, you definitely. You, you don't. You don't look uh, great by any means. But you know, you're you're 29. You're you have a good idea already of who you are, what you stand for. You have. A, I'm assuming you're self-aware. Right. What would you go back and tell us? Chill out just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, just chill out just a little bit. Because I, I, I stressed out about everything, yeah. you know? And it, at the end of the day, I, I put in the legwork and I, and I did everything that I was supposed to do. And whether I won or lost or, or did well or didn't do well, I know that I always did everything the way I was supposed to do it. And I would still treat myself like I didn't do anything. Right. And I think it kind of took a toll on me mentally because it started to make me a little bit weak. 
when you talk to yourself negatively, you know, it makes yourself, it, whether you like it or not, or you admit it to anybody or not, you do tend to to build weaknesses. Right. And, to believe yourself. Yeah, and when, you, when you're facing with bigger problems and bigger problems, you're always going to go back to that mentality, you know, because that's what you, that's Three. your self-talk, yeah. And I think if I wouldn't have started that so young, then I wouldn't have had such a big problem dealing with it when I got older. And I think that's the main thing when it comes to anything, really, even like my son or my husband or problems, just family, it's always like real negative and I have to we're always work real hard on not talking to myself the way I do. So called mentalizing instead of putting it all together. Like. Yeah, and, and with boxing, I've learned, boxing by itself, I've learned to compartmentalize a lot because uh, it's the only thing that because I'm so obsessed with it, and right. I'm so worried about it, and it's all I think about. I think about going to sleep, I think about it when I wake up. <laughs> you know, it's like how I go to bed, yeah. and I have to do that, because then I'll go crazy if I put it. I mean, it's a bad sparring day, or I'm going into a fight, or whenever I was pregnant, and I and I knew that this is just what I have to do. There's nothing I can do about it. You know, I need to take this time off. I, I'm having a baby. You're, the bounce back's going to be hard. I don't feel good. It's like, yeah, because you just had a baby. You don't feel good. It's normal. And those things I was kind of... How much did you lose? Uh, almost, what, 65 pounds? I was pushing like 180, 175, 180, and I'm like probably like 117 right now, 118 right now. How many days did you gym? Till I got back to the gym? No, how many days, how, how many days did you gym did it take to, keep going from, to go from the... Oh, I've been from, like 120 for about how long? Maybe, it took me a good solid two months. But you're working out five days a week? Oh, no, I work out the whole, every, almost every day. Seven days a week. Yeah, some days I'll get, take like the Sunday or Saturday off, but at the beginning I wasn't. I would just do half days when I was tired. But you're strategic about it, right? Like if yeah. You're, you and I do a lot of therapy, and you know, yeah. I've, I've learned a lot about uh, recovery and ice baths and, yeah. you know, So do you buy that? Uh, well, not the ice bath. The ice bath is obviously important. You ever do the Cairo? I don't do the Cairo. I don't believe in it. Okay. Yeah, Go. I am not going to spend $60 on that either. You got me messed up. I, was like, <laughs> <laughs> I just stand outside in the cold. Right. But no, I've, uh, I th the reason I don't believe in that is because, man, maybe when every, like five years ago, six years ago, when everybody was like all on it, right. like, oh, it's yeah. the best thing, you got to try it. I did. I tried it. And I was remember I was in Miami and I, my legs were real sore. And I went and I did it, and we were walking around, and I, they were still really sore. And I was like, man, this is weird. And I tried it again, still nothing. A few years later, I talked to some guy uh, who owns Snack. His name is Victor Conti. Um, and he's in uh, California, and I was talking to him about it, and he said, it's because people are confused. It's it's more for uh, less aging, mm -hmm. and it's good for your skin, and it's like if you have problems with skin. So it's more cosmetic. Yeah, it's, it doesn't go all the way into the tissue. So it only goes skin deep. And ducking in that water. And ducking in the so water saturates your muscles a lot better than the kind of I've got a real big problem with uh, not believing in new shit. <laughs> and, and but I try to but I try to stay uh, open because I don't want nobody to pass me up either. And uh I'm glad you just said that because I didn't I didn't I didn't understand of course I know how the ice baths work and they work. Yeah. But I didn't understand the prior uh, thing. And I ain't going to say it doesn't work. You got people that swear to it, too. And and I, I imagine your body chemistry got everything to do with it, who you are, maybe. Yeah. I don't know, the same way you diet. Some some people eat and don't gain nothing. And you eat and you, and you gain five pounds right fast. You know, yeah. I, I don't know if that has something to do with it, but I'm not, I'm not quick to jump on things at all. I, I agree on when it has to do with the person, but I think a lot of it's just like the placebo effect. It's very mental thing like which is valuable if yeah. you need that hey and if it or works for you it works for you oh god so like, <laughs> start on the mask. people don't know and if i go on instagram everyone has a mask and the thing is, is that look i'm not <laughs> nobody to tell anybody what to do you know? right. like i know that it's hurting you're me. nobody you're just an olympic medalist <laughs> undefeated please tell me <laughs> <about that. laughs> yeah, i want to know <laughs> about your situation it hurts them more than it helps them so the thing about the mask is there's no way that a mask, which is, sorry about my baby guys, there's no way that the okay, mask. Like that. <laughs> I didn't even hear that, baby. <laughs> he barely made noise. Like, what is going on? Don't pay attention to me. Uh, but the thing about the mask is there's no way that a mask with a little filter can change your altitude. Just right. think about it. 
altitude is where you're low on the ground or high on the ground. It's not changing where you're at on the ground. All it's doing is filtering out the air that you're breathing. So uh, what it's doing is it's just making your lungs work a lot harder for the air that you have. And that's not has anything to do with high altitude. It's making you suffer. High altitude has to do with how much oxygen that your body's getting in every breath it takes. So is your blood getting a lot of oxygen or is it getting a little bit of oxygen? The max, you're, you're working for it. It has nothing to do with it. Like you're delivering apples or you're delivering donuts, right. you know? But the amount that's getting delivered is always the same. It, it, it just does, it doesn't make any sense to me. Here's how silly I thought about that. Which I just never told anybody. That's what I thought what you're saying. But then I said, uh, something like that might help for asthmatic people. It was making their lungs work and clear out. Maybe, I don't know, I don't know no science behind it. But as far as, uh, you know, because you're not getting, I, I looked at it as, you know, you just uh, making your lungs struggle, right? right? Yeah. So, uh, which isn't a good thing. Take the mask off, man. So they, have, they actually have uh, kits, and I forgot what they're called, because there's different manufacturers, different companies that make them. But they're like stages, and it's like a box, a little box, and has like one, two, three, four, like 12 little things that you breathe into. Okay. And it's kind of like the mask, but different gauges, like a different difficulty level. Right, to so supposedly in. different altitudes. No, no, not not the altitudes. This is a, to make your lungs stronger, okay. right? Which is- What well, uh, I was thinking with the asthmatic. Which yeah, you yeah. were thinking that the mask does, but that's not what the mask does. And you can actually, every morning, you're supposed to do like actually, 15 actually, breaths yeah. and do it before you wake up in the morning when you go to sleep. Mm -hmm. And eventually, you'll work your lungs up. So let your lungs lift weights. Yeah, train, basically. Train. So like, uh, whenever you go up a flight of steps, and I, even if you're in the best shape of your life, when you go up the steps, sometimes you lose your breath. Mm -hmm. And you're like, why did I lose my breath if I'm in shape? Mm -hmm. It's just because your lungs didn't have enough time to warm up. Uh -huh. So they lost. So the, if you use those, it supposedly, which I think it works. I've never really done it. I'm not, um, I wasn't a, like, I didn't listen. So I never did. I didn't keep it. <laughs> like, I tried it a few times and it was, I couldn't keep the schedule, but it's supposed to allow your lungs to be quicker, like mm -hmm. train, 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 train quicker. Train yeah, yeah. yeah. See that? and yes. and that's what I feel like the mask could do. But because it's used the wrong way, it just messes you up. Right. And I want to walk up to a lot of kids that I see at the gym that I really like. Well, I just want to be like, hey, you shouldn't, <laughs> shouldn't wear that. But I just don't want anybody to be like, oh, you think you know everything, and then da da da. It's like my. The best thing I could do is like print them off something off the internet and be like, here, right. maybe you should read this. Well, you, you preaching to the choir, so now I get to talk some shit. But I had, uh, cause I'm gonna go with it. Uh, I had a fighter, he's real trendy, right? So every new thing, he does it. And I'm just looking at him going, why you can't just do what I'm telling you to do, man? I mean, the mask, this, huh? And so, you know, take the fucking mask off. <laughs> what you doing, man? Can you just throw the jab straight and bring it back fast? That's what I need you to do. That's it. But no, no, it, it's funny to me because, no, all jokes aside, I realize I'm old school because just because my trainers were literally old school, right? So, but I try to stay open because if you came in here and said the exact opposite, I mean, like, okay, maybe there's something to yeah. it. Let me see. You know, she's successful at, right. at this level. Uh, but that was my thought with that mask. Like, yeah. like you're not giving your body the oxygen it needs to put out this work you put, man. It's like a, you you flowing it down the interstate with no with, with the light on. Yeah. Well, bro, you're going to crash. You gonna, it's going to stop. It's going to stop. But I bet you get a chest or something. I mean, no science behind it. I just was no, thinking like that. Nothing beats hard work. But that's what I, that's what I was gonna say. Regardless if you're doing old school, like Derek's saying, if you're doing new school, you're doing USA style Olympic Training Center, all these stuff. Regardless, nothing's gonna beat heart and determination. So and they have altitude masks, like real ones that, but you have to get up to a machine, um, and the machine generates whether you're high altitude or low altitude. Is that what that Conti dude does with that tube? Yeah. That's what they do. That, yeah, that's what that does. And it's like it's like a ten thousand dollar machine. I'm a big Mikey yeah. fan, so I wouldn't have never seen that had I not been paying attention. To yeah, Mikey. that's what Mikey was using. It's like the high altitude machine. You can also do lower altitude each of it. And there's like science behind it. It's something that you need a degree to kind of figure out, you know. But the, the thing that I think is so tricky too about is boxing, you know, because 
they have, well, no one really knows how to do it because boxing is old school. I mean, right. it's really just the what's the most you can do with your body, period. Like my body versus your body. And it's like a lot more difficult because there's no basketball involved, there's no football right. in the field, there's no, you know, there's no uh, swimming pool. So it's a little bit more difficult, I think, on that. And it's, it's the, the one thing that for the people, because I kind of like to figure out what's new to you and try and right. like, all the new things and see what's good. Yeah, if it's like, hey, you want it. Right, yeah, if right. exactly you want to figure it out. But I think the best thing that I learned over time and time and time is that the only way to get good at boxing is by boxing. boxing. Boom. You have to box. Boom. You can't, you can't substitute it with sprints and running and you can't be like, oh, I don't That's need to go these rounds. Because you, because I ran 10 miles today, so I don't need to right. do the gym or I mix it up with sprints. If you want to be good at boxing, you have to box. And it should be the priority over the strength and conditioning, over the running, over the biking, over the high altitude mass. Over the gym, pop out selfies. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think what she's saying is, that, correct me if I'm wrong, she's not down in those things. If they help you, giving you a head, fine. But you know how you get good at boxing. I just, I just told yeah. somebody that the other day, somebody that I was training, I was like, look, I've been doing this a long time. I can give you all the tools. But until you step in the ring and get hit, right. you ain't going to know, you know. Yeah. I, I Sounds taught you how to do. I taught you to move the side, but obviously you ain't doing it because you're in the headlights, like the whole Mike Tyson thing. Everybody got a plan until they get here. Yeah, I remember when I was younger, Rudy. Like we, I'd be fighting girls, right? And a lot of them look better than me. And I don't know, like people's fundamentals are a lot better. I, I don't have like the perfect stance, or my timing's really good. You know, my, my boxing IQ is really high, and I'm and I'm fast. But there's a lot of like the prettiness. You know, it takes me a long time to so get. Yeah, 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 sharp. Yeah. It takes me a long time to get those. I get them, but it's peaking time when I have them. It's not all the time. And I remember Rudy would, I would be watching girls like before you fight, and I'm like, man, she's really good. And he'd be like, yeah, it's because the mitts don't hit you back. <laughs> and it's like, that's Amen. when I started to kind of realize that, that, that it's percent. not necessarily everything. Boxing is not about how you throw your punches, it's about when you throw your punches. Mm-hmm. And that's something that you can only learn by not really getting in there and figuring it out for yourself. Yeah. What's the. Uh, we doing a podcast, or I get to ask what I want to ask. <laughs> Stuff I'm interested in. Uh, the dynamic of of you and your coach, right? I'm sure the importance is one out of ten, ten. But when you weren't with him, like at the, I'm sure he, he may have went to to uh, Colorado when he could, but. There was times you competed. Like I seen one of your pro fights, you was with uh, Virgil Hunter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What's the dynamic between you and your trainer is? It's, you know, it's probably the one of the most important things to me now. And it took me a lot. I mean, again, I was learning. I had to, I had to figure it out for myself. And it was kind of those, like, uh, when you're a kid and you want to leave the house. You know, and that's what it felt like. It was like I had uh, learned everything from Rudy. And it was after the games, they invited me to, the, to Colorado to work with a Cuban coach. Mm-hmm. And he was, uh, his name was Pedro, and he was like the best Cuban coach. He had Rigondeau and uh, Gamboa, and he had them over there. And he came to the U.S., and he called USA Boxing, and he said, I'm here, I need a job. And he kind of like took off. He wasn't allowed back to Cuba. Oh, that's what they and, all tried to do. Yeah, and he's a really good coach, probably one of the best that I've ever, I've ever had in my life. And just super technical, can just fix you, just on point, and um, had different tricks and stuff. So I went over there with him because he said that out of the whole squad, the Cuba Internationals to watch us, and he said that out of everybody, he could five people that he could get to get a gold medal. And I was one of the people that he said that he could get me a gold medal for sure if he trains me. So I was like, man, that's all you gotta tell me, and I'm there, you know? <laughs> so I went with him and I was thinking, you know, Rudy taught me everything we could do, and I was just a little bit short. So I knew Rudy was great. I mean, it's just the group is in the pudding. He taught me everything I know. I've seen him with other fighters who come in, and he just knows how to talk to people, really, right. and he knows how to train. So I just figured, man, I just need something a little bit better. And that's what I, I figured. I was like, I just need something a little bit better. So I went to that coach, and I was there. And same thing, you know, it was, um, I was a learning process. I learned new things. And then after that, uh, I trained myself for a little bit. And then I went to Virgil, mm-hmm. and I, I learned new things. And then all the full circle, I just realized that at the end of the day, no matter how much I learn, if I'm not comfortable, 
that I'm not gonna win. Mm. I'm just not gonna win. They, I'll win these little, you know, four rounders and these girls that, you know, learn their jab in the back, you know, and all that. I, I the stepping stones of, of boxing. But when shit gets hard and you're kind of, I'm asking myself questions like, can I do this? And I don't have a coach that knows me, and I don't have a coach that can tell me that, yeah, you're okay. It's someone who met me three years ago and they just know a little bit here and there. There's nothing that they can tell me that's gonna make me feel confident or feel better about what I'm doing. And the only person that I have that with is Rudy. He trained me for so long. Okay, what, kind of, what kind of student are you versus your trainer? Are you stubborn? Do you, do you take everything like a sponge? I would, I would say I'm a, I would be a sponge, but, and I've always been a sponge, but now that I'm old, older, it all goes back to like the lessons learned. Now I'm a little bit more confident in saying like, I don't need that. And for the most part, I'll still take it in or I'll still try it, I'll still give it a, a go around. But as soon as I give it a few times, I know my gut's telling me it's not right, I'm trying it, it's not right, it's not right. And I, and I think those are things I didn't know when I was younger. I still kept trying to press something that wasn't me or try things that weren't me. And so I would say I'm more of a sponge. I said, listen, and I get mad sometimes, you know, like I don't want to do this <laughs> and I'm pissed off and tired and I don't want to go another round, but I go another round. Uh, so for the most part, I would say I, I listen. That, uh, I want to bring it back to where I, because I was going, I knew she was going to clean it up in the end. <laughs> Rudy, that's why I asked. I've been here since 08 uh, competing and, and Rudy Silver's uh, fighters has always been elite. Uh, so he would me not knowing uh, knowing him close or anything, it doesn't matter. Your product shows me what I need to see, right? So I know if I'm fighting one of these guys, we got to be on our thing. But to put it in layman terms, uh, or in my terms, uh, what you just said, you know, the coaches, trainers can know everything. Could, could, you know, there's, that's why you, as a trainer, I don't get caught up with a guy saying they not no good or this is no good because that relationship you're speaking of is so it, 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 uh, imperative, meaning this. With Rudy, I'm sure, those thoughts, am I doing this right, am I good, can I do this, it's not there like it is with those guys because if Rudy tells you, well, man, I need you to run through that wall right there, you just run to the front wall because you know he's not going to ask you to run through the wall. Now, that's a dynamic that has to be uh, developed, I like to say developed. So those other guys, it's, it's nothing to do with that. The Cuban guy, they, they, they got gold medals running out their heads. That had nothing to do with it. If that guy said run through the wall, my man said, but that fucking wall is a brick wall. Yeah. You know, that ain't a, that ain't a, that ain't she, right? You yeah. know what I'm saying? And 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 that's where I that's why I asked you the question. Because that's a dynamic people don't talk about. I think with the coaching and the fighters, uh when uh, the fighters I've developed from the ground, when they come back to the corner, they don't have to think. They don't have to overthink what's going on. They know when they come back to the corner, they're gonna hear. This is what you did, and this is what I need you to do. Now go do it. And if they don't hear anything, that's because they did something right. Right. I'm not going to say it. I was talking to Hicks earlier, and he said that. He said, man, I heard you when we came to You wasn't shouting a bunch of directions, and, and, and the things I heard you say was exactly what he needed to do. And he was like, I compared that to, he said, I compared that to him, him and his coach. My coach don't do a bunch of all that hooting and hollering. And it ain't a knock on hooting and hollering. It's just that the fighter has to have that dynamic with his trainer or her trainer. And that's developed. You can't do that. You can't just do that with somebody. No matter how great a trainer they are. No matter how great a fighter they are. You got to you got to build that thing and and, and that's things I'm interested in hearing yeah, the fighter explain it in their words like, listen. It's a level of trust is what it is. Right. And it's a different level of trust because I mean, I, again, I've never, it's, I'm, I don't play other sports, and I, I've, I've been solely all about boxing. And even people say it's, I'm not the only one. It's, there's, uh, they do tests all the time. You know, boxing is the hardest sport. It always right. is, and hockey's always second, and then it fluctuates after that. But boxing is so difficult that I just feel like that's always what gives people a mental edge, is the relationship between a, a, a fighter and the coach. 
So I feel like if there's two equally good fighters and they're both mentally strong, they're both um, they're still physically sound and they know what they're doing and they're just elite athletes and you have one that has a strong connection with the coach and one that kind of jumps around the coaches, I feel like the one with the strong connection is always going to win. Always. And it's just because you, you're in there and things are going wrong, things are going right. And I've been in, in I've been in that situation, and the coach is telling you one thing, and it's like a filter. So you're te- you're thinking, okay, they just told me to throw the jab, and I need to start, you know, moving to the right, and I'm getting hit with too many hooks, and I'm filtering it. Like, is that right? Is that right? Is that right? Yes, that's right. Yes, that's right. Take it, go. You know, and then other times it's like they're telling me stuff, and I'm like, ah, no, I don't, I don't like that idea. No, not good, not good. Okay, go back, confused, right? And then when I'm with Rudy, it's like, do this, do this. And it's like, there's no filter. It's just like, okay, this is what it is. And there's no second guessing and there's no questions. And I think the most I'll ask him is, you know, what am I getting hit with and what do I do about it? It's kind of my thing, you know, that I like, he knows what I like to be told. And we, we use, you know, that no, 60 seconds yeah. as, best, yeah, and as best as yeah. we can. Perfect, perfect explanation right yeah. there. I mean, as coaches I look up to, right? Just from the outside looking in. And then you'll see them get paired up with a guy and you're like, oh, this is going to be perfect. And then it's shit. And then you go, how you got the best, one of the best coaches in the world, a top athlete that doesn't work? Well, it's missing that. It's missing that because this kid's standing here in that field. Yeah, you trying to correct me or give me something to fix this, man, but I don't know you. Right? Yeah. And like, you don't know me. While, while, yeah. while I'm saying, okay, my mind's going yeah. unconsciously. Well, I don't know you. Yeah. How do I know if this shit and I can tell you, I can tell you when those dynamics work, when I can sit next to Coach Rudy, whether he's talking to Marlene or his other elite fighters, it can be loud, loud as I don't know what. And Coach Rudy will say something and they hear it. Exactly. And they just swing soon. to the right and all of a sudden she swings to the right. Like, man, how does she hear that? You know, it's all loud. And, and that's that. Yeah. yeah. No matter how loud it is, they can hear him. And those are the ones that I know are going to be successful because it's that dynamic. Why the outside, everybody on the outside saying, oh, she don't do this, or he don't do this. Yeah, I hear you, man. But I'm over here in Colorado. I'm over here in such and such. Yeah. Why you sitting, over, sitting at home on your ass? That's why you don't listen to me. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I like that I like that dynamic, man. And I, I love the ex-fighters, things like that. Like, what's, what's the edge? You know, what? why do you see the success? Because at the end of the day, uh, the, f- the fitness level and stuff is so, you know, I like to say it, it, it's 90% mental and 10%, there, but the, the 10% got to be 100%, right? Get to, yeah. And and, and that, that that mental aspect of the game is so valuable, but it's everything in it. It's all that. It's what you just explained, plus believing what you do, seeing it works, you develop it, and uh, yeah, you can't, sometimes people make that mis- misstep in their career, man. Yeah. You can you can adjust because everybody in their mama's telling you, even people who have a financial situation with you, to where you damn never feel you gotta listen. But it may not be the right thing, man. It, it may not be. Mm-hmm. What got me here? Now, the people with those dynamics, I think uh, uh, they always go back to them people. Not, it don't even have to be to fight. Hey, coach, this coach over here is telling me such and such and such, and I don't know, you know. And, and nine times out of ten, if you felt that dynamic with man, the coach don't want to see you hurt. Period. 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 That's my job. I, you know, I've had fighters I train and from no no fault of own, we go separate ways or whatever. And they always coach. And such and such. And guess what? I have no vested interest except that I want you to win and do good and be, be be great. And the fighter knows that too. Yeah. And I think, you know, I had to come back because of that. And the whole it was too weird. I was learning, I was, Bird is a man, I think he's a beast. Mm-hmm. He really is, like sometimes he teaches me stuff and I'm like, that is blew my mind. Like all the time, constantly, constantly, constantly. But you can also see that with uh, Andre Ward, it's obviously, you know, his thing, everything that he knows, Andre Ward knows. And you can see, Andre Ward's a technician, that dude can just break you, and break you, and break you. And his, his he's just a smart. Yeah, he knows uh, how to teach and he explains things really well. But at the end of the day, it's like, if I if I don't have the confidence to use it, it's not going to do anything for me. He can teach me everything, and then when it comes to my test, and it's like all eyes on me, and I have all this pressure, and I don't really trust 
you when I come back, then you know what can I what can I do? And so I had to come back for that. You can do it, and it has nothing to do with believing. You believe what he say? I believe, bro. But <laughs> I don't have a man. My conscience, my my uh. No, yeah. I, fast twitch <laughs> ain't with you, bro. Because there's a lot going on when you're fighting. There's a lot going on, and it's and especially when you care about it to the level that like I do, it's. Because you feel like if one thing goes wrong, then your whole world's going to come around right. now. You know, you, you have one ba one bad round, and your brain, start, my brain starts to take off on me. You know, like, man, that was a bad round. Is the next round right. going to be bad? Is this, like, am I seeing how this fight's going to play off? Versus being like, okay, that was bad. Let me, let me fix it. Let me, let me, make, let me make an adjustment. And, I, and if when you're fighting and you don't have someone to reassure you that you trust or come back to, it's like you're fighting by yourself. Even though you are fighting by yourself, you you want someone to kind of just help you out a little bit. And if you can't trust the person 100% that you're coming back to, it just, it, it's, it's no use. It's just kind of, it's it just doesn't a, matter what the words are. So yeah. It doesn't matter how convincing he sounds. None of that. Yeah. So we talked about the dynamic of relationship and culture. Fight. We talked about your regimen, your, your, your sexual training. You made a statement earlier. You said, "You know, I don't have, you know, I don't do the, I, I don't have the smoothest jab. Why well, don't do this?" Right. Someone else might do. What's your strength? If you had to sit back yourself, if you had to take a step back and watch film of yourself, or what would you say? What makes you special? Sound like right. all ahead. <laughs> Stop uh, it. She's gonna win. <laughs> what, what's that? What's that next factor? What I would say that I make I make really good adjustments by myself. So if I get hit really clean with like a hook or an uppercut or you know anything I didn't really expect you to do, then you're not gonna hit me with that again. Yeah, you're not. I'm not that's that's it's not gonna go down like that. Like I'm not gonna get hit with that again. If something was not working, then I know that I need to try something else. I'm not gonna keep going for the same thing over and over. And I know how to make people do things that I want them to do and they don't know that I'm making them do that. Like, I'm making you think that I don't know that you're about to load right. up on that, but I am. And from the in outside, it doesn't look like anything because you don't know what's going on. But from the inside, it's a lot different. I think that's why people, it's working in my favor now that I'm a pro, but that's why I think a lot of girls always think that they can beat me and that I'm nothing special because they see me and they're like, oh, you know, okay. But once they get in there, it's just not the same. Do you have an next time you're back? I think so, for a lot of reasons. One, because everyone just thinks that everything was given to me and that I'm not actually that skilled of a fighter. And two, because everyone like wants to say that they've beaten me because I have a, a bit of a name. Right. And no one's like, no one can really say that they've done anything to me. And then it's just like, I'm a good name to have on a resume, you know? And people don't, a lot of the pro girls don't like me for, for multiple reasons, you know? Like my success in the amateurs and um, just people talking shit all the time, and I just think that like everyone just wants me to to fail. Like they like each other to do well sometimes, but they don't ever really like me to do well. But you gotta use that to your advantage. Yeah, it doesn't bother me yeah. anymore. Like it's, when it, what bothers me more are the people that aren't in boxing. The people that are in boxing, I'm like, you know what? You know me. I know you know me, and I don't give a <laughs> shit what you say. Cause I know that you know, and you know. Yeah. But when it's like other people where I'm like, yo, like, what's your problem, right. dude? Like, what's wrong with you? Like, why are you always on me? Yeah. Like, do you what have you heard? Right? Yeah, it's like, what have you heard or what do you think? Or, you know, just like, talk to me. You know, you want me to follow you on Instagram? We be no, friends. Yes. I don't know what your deal is. <laughs> um, that probably hurt that you didn't answer me back on Facebook. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and I completed it. Okay. I get so much flag for being like, oh, I'm over here. You like me. But, yeah, I get flag from you and everybody, man. But I'm, I, 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 this is exactly how I feel. She's not. That's not. Coach, be humble, humble, humble. Nah, humble, I don't humble for what? I don't now, humble. don't be a jerk. Yeah. Don't be an a hole. Don't be all that. I'm not none of that either. <clears throat> but like, like she said, that's strong minded, man. That's that's. Hey, man, I know what I'm doing. I'm on this mission. And and if you a naysayer, excuse me. And going about your business, I feel like that's strong character to me. I don't. It ain't. It has nothing to do with you being a jerk. 
Yeah, I'm not being a jerk to you, but I ain't gonna sit here and chuck and jab and, and do a dance for you either, man. Yeah, and I and I, sometimes I try to get confused because I have been through the mental process of like, well, what do people want? Yeah, like, but, what but, is but, it that but that's you what want? you have. I mean, who, that's where you have the team, though, right? I want this. Who, 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 who's in your who's in your corner saying, hey? And with you, I don't see it being an issue because you already have that self control, but. I think but, my, you have my husband helps me a lot. Right. Boom. I was thinking husband. Girl, I swear I was going, he's going to keep us straight yeah. when they go home. My hey, you could have handled this a little better or whatever, because that's their, they but, 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 but at the same time, look, you're an athlete yeah. and you're a friend. Right. And so you have to protect that. Yeah, and sometimes and you, I'm sure you have. I forget. Whoever's on the, whoever the suits are. Well, are. I get upset because sometimes I'm like, you know what? You know, fuck all that and what I am and the brand and all this. Like, man, you're re they're really pissing me off. And I'm tired. <laughs> you know, I'm tired of this. Right. And I just want to, like, you know, just do Bring what I gotta do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to go good on everybody and be like, oh, for real, this is like, this is what it is. You know. But at the end of the day, it's really not what I want to look like. Right. But sometimes I don't know how to handle it, and I'm just really upset. And I and I have to ask someone that's a lot more level-headed and can see everything from right. inside out. And that's the, the best person is really my husband because he lives every day. You don't come across, though, to me, right here in this conversation, as well as everything else. You don't come across as egomaniac. No. So tell that to everybody else. Everyone nah, knows but, but you know why? Because we're similar. No, I'm not, no, I'm no, not, I'm no, not going to that. It's, 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 what, it's, how, it's how people want to proceed because they don't know it. And that's why we want to do shows like this, so people can get to know you and be like, oh, wait, she isn't an evil man. And she, she, she said she, in she, here yeah. has, been, no. has been arrogant. At all. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. So all the people who want to see that, you're doing that, man. Right. You're doing that. Right. So, so what they do is they get confused because they want you I see her in the gym, I see her, and she looks angry, she's working. And, and, and I just want to say hi sometimes, like, you know what, maybe not, because it's she's in the zone. She's you know, in the zone. You know, and if you stop and, and, and to see who she really is, you'd be like, well, that's not the person I thought it was. Right. Yeah. So you're seeing who she is, who she really is. Right. You know? And this is not, I Which promise you, she, this is right? not the person that's training yeah. in the gym. Yeah, my wrist right? bitch face is really you know? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta turn it on. That's that drive. You gotta turn but it on. I do man. Get, but see, okay, but then at the other hand, and this is what a lot of people don't know or don't take into consideration about me or about women fighters period and especially i would say because i started really young so a lot of these girls that came up i mean they started oh, pretty yeah. late yeah. you know 2010 you know i think Michaela started like oh nine and she's like killing it you know but it's like i started when i was 11 10 11 years old and when i was in the boxing gym it was not cool you know so there was a lot of guys and i didn't even realize that i'm attractive and so i got older and I started, people kept trying to talk to me in the gym. You know, and then when guys are trying to talk to you at the boxing gym, and then you're trying to be taken serious as a boxer, the only thing I could think of to do when I was younger is to <laughs> just, to just <laughs> be a super bitch. You yeah, know, just, like, just ignore uh, everybody. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't talk to you. I don't acknowledge you. I don't know you. Because if, if I smile at you, you're flirting. I'm flirting. Right. If I have a conversation with a guy, I oh, like right. it. If I talk too long to somebody during the, during the rest, Oh, I'm here for no, re for no reason. And that's the dynamic that guys just don't have to yeah. deal with. I'm distracting the guys. You know, oh, you know, this guy needs a focus. Stop talking to him. Like, he's talking to me. Yeah. I'm not talking to him. So it became, um, after a while, just something that I did at the gym. And I still haven't gotten, learned how to fully get out of that. And it's just how I've learned to operate in the boxing gym. So all of a sudden I get in to work out and I get really serious and I just kind of just turn yeah, everything off it be and it, and it, it turns be like that. that way. Yeah. I've learned now to like walk in and say hello to people, you know, because I didn't used to do that. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't to be rude or ugly or right. uh, mm -hmm. conceited. It, 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 it was a defense mechanism. It really was. Right, because you saw, you, you, you saw how quickly things could be misinterpreted and misread. So you're just like, I'm just going to say well. Yeah, yeah, I have a lot of problems with that. Yeah. A lot, um, a lot of problems with that. Like, you know, there was a few times when I was younger too that Rudy thought I was like dating someone at the gym, and so I'm not dating anybody. I'm not talking to anyone or doing anything. So I wanted to dress like a boy, look like a boy, act like a boy. And it wasn't until I hit this real big moment in my life that I just decided I'm. A, I like being girly and I like being a girl, and that's how I'm gonna act. Like being a girl. 
<laughs> and and that's how I'm gonna be. And if no one likes it, then I'm sorry. And I'm already doing what I'm doing. And it was after that is actually when I started to uh, get a lot more popular and get a lot more support and a lot more sponsors. I'm not a, I'm not a feminist in no kind of way, but lately in the last couple of years, I've been having to realize you guys, your gals have fought so hard, they just get at the fucking table, man. Just let me sit down, man. So that other dynamic, <coughs> we can't even get into that, really. Mainstream, start talking about that dynamic of it because you're still trying to get a seat at the table, man. It's, it's, it's heavy, man. Do you, do you, do you wear it with pride or do you dislike it when you first female, uh, whatever it is that you have, whether it's medals, whether it's golden uh, boy, uh, hired, or joining you know, a contract, uh, do you, yeah. how, how, how do you dress, you know, she, 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 I, 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 or are you like, no, fuck that, I ain't no female, no, nothing. I'm a boxer, and this, you know, I'm, how do you, how do you, how do you, how do you receive that, that? I, I do, I, I love do it. it, I do, I do, I think sometimes, depending on the situation, it gets, un I do get a little upset, because it gets uncomfortable, it's like I'm tired of, the like the males and females right. and then now they're like they're giving Carissa and Hammer that pink belt. Right. I love the WBC. I love what they're doing. I love that they're supporting women's right. boxing. I just don't think it has to be the, that sexist. Oh, right. And see, you know, then people get mad at me when I say stuff like that. It's like, oh my god, you said it out loud. It's like, look, I it just it. is. When I see it, just, it, I it. thought it. I'm like, I've always wanted a green belt. Right. right. I've always dreamt of a green belt, and you're gonna give me a pink belt. That's all Clarissa's been saying is. You know, women's trying to do that. Let's carry the women's thing, and then and when they showed the uh, press conference and they brought out that pink belt, I said, "Ain't that?" Some and shit. I think it's just their way of trying to be supportive. Yeah, they're trying to, they're trying to, trying to bridge the gap. It's an inclusion, yeah. and so it's hard because it's hard. So it's kind of the same way with the first woman. Right. You know, it's like it's hard to to get mad at it right. because that's just the way it is. But at the same time, like I I I, I have a, it's like okay, I always have to be. A woman, but at the end of the day, it's just it, 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 it just is, yeah. Well, you well you are a woman. Don't get lost yeah. in that sauce neither. Trying yeah. to make it all even. No, 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 no. <laughs> you can do shit we can't do. Yeah. So, so I had babies. yeah, yeah. That's and, and I think that's where we get they lost. Come back three months later, we so we so we so uh in society, especially in the last ten years, we're so hell bent on making everything equal. I'm not equal to my wife, bro. I can't do what she do, man. I couldn't. I couldn't handle half the shit she handles with. I would flick out and run, run away. So it's not. No, no. Just don't put up no roadblocks, man. Don't block me from the table. Yeah. yeah. yeah I'm not you, cause you ain't me. Yeah. But, but, excuse me, man. Let me get my seat. I think that's what it is. And listening to them, uh, Clarissa and them talking about women. I, I'm, I'm such a huge uh, woman's boxer. I'm, I'm a fan of women, but boxing. And I said, man, she's sitting there saying, we, we getting pressed now, Marlene's getting pressed, you know, with the levies and I, And then they brought out that pink belt, and I was like, it didn't offend me. I wasn't but offended like by it, but I'm like, I get friends. it. I get what y'all yeah. doing, but then at the same time, that ain't what the participants right. are saying. They saying, I'm a fighter. So Let me I'm fight. Saying, so what I'm saying is, instead of bringing out that pink belt, why don't, why don't you pay them like you pay people to, to fight for that belt? Guess what? Put women's, if you want, on the level. Yeah. That's fine, because I'm a woman. But the, uh, I've seen it. It kind of just contradicted it's, it's just what like she was saying. What, it, what they're trying. It's I'm sure it was well-intentioned. Yeah, it's well-intended, and it's just the opposite of what they're actually trying right. to do. I think, I mean, at least I don't know how all the other girls feel, but I know that I would be upset if I all my life I wanted a green belt and all of a sudden they pull up a pink belt. I'd be like, for real, <laughs> guys, for real. Like, and so I think that's something I'm that I'm gonna take note. That comes along. Sure green one, green. And those are, those are things that you know you also have to. You know, pull this sure she that's the thing. And then at the same time, you don't want to get anybody upset, and it gets sticky because you know when that time does come, it's like if they want to give me a pink belt, they're gonna be, and I get upset. They're gonna go here, you know, great. This you know, you're yeah. unappreciated. Yeah, right. and it and it becomes it becomes sticky. So then you got to pick your battles. Yeah. And I've learned that, and it's like, is it really getting people worth getting? You know, the WBC upset about, or is it right? Because that's not your motive either. Yeah. Though it's not to piss them off and not not represent them. You just yeah. finish your dream. The younger me would have been like, give me a green belt. 
the younger you and like F this I want a green belt now but now I'm getting older and realize that sometimes it's just not worth it because it hurts you do more you, than it helps you do you remember your, your 15 year old self your 16 year old self I do I do what would what, what, what would your what would your 15 year old self tell you today she probably give me some bad advice <laughs> <laughs> she probably give me some bad fish. advice I told my daughter the other day, I said, man, you, you just like me, and she don't want to be like me, of course. And, I, and she took it offensively. I don't want to be like me, and I'm thinking to myself, no, you think you know she, you, you have no idea, because I did. Yeah. And it's nobody's fault. You don't have the information. How can you add it up if you don't have the information? You can't. So you, I see you doing things I did while thinking you know what you're doing. That's all I mean. Yeah. And no, yeah. That 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 dynamic go back to the to the woman's thing. The reason why I say I'm not a feminist or nothing like that is because while all those things uh, I see, I recognize, well a younger me may have didn't even recognize. Yeah. What's she a bitch about to think that? Yeah. You a girl. You know what I'm saying? But that's the same way that the gals gotta realize the attractive part, what you saying, that's real life. It's guys. We guys, you know what I'm saying? So as long as they don't cross lines, those pay per views. If they cross lines and stuff, yeah, check it. But I'm saying if a guy looks at his uh, fire and goes, man, she's attractive. Don't pretend that ain't a thing either. The same way I'm saying, because I, I also, been, been in boxing my, my whole life, being a trainer, there's certain uh, female fighters that I see and I'm fans, super fans, and then I listen to guys. You know the quotes. Yeah, you know, uh, she looks like a dude. Uh, she loves it. <laughs> and, and you know, I get offended. I get offended. I'm like, well, good. Say, bro, if you don't like it, yeah. move around. Like man. this isn't Miss Universe, though. Or not, that's, this isn't a beauty. It's, it's, it's twofold. So the ones that's attractive, oh man, I would do this. Shut up, man. Shut up. You ain't gonna do shit. And then the, the ones that is deemed unattractive, they catch hell too. So. Yeah. That's yeah, what I'm saying know. about getting a seat at the table. Man, just give me a seat at the table, yeah, man. That's all, and let me show you how to fist fight. Cause that's what I'm tell you what, though. If anybody's going to bust down these walls and break through those doors and get a seat, mm. that's going to be hurt. Oh, she's been doing it. Man, yeah, she's been it's going to be That's what I said. It's also difficult, though, especially, I mean, boxing is just so difficult when it comes to not even just the physical part and being the boxer part, it's just everything that comes with it, the, the politics, the boys' world, then the girl. You know, it, it would be a lot easier for us as women if we supported each other. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't, and the bottom line is we don't, and they say they do, and I don't care what anybody said this to me, is the Omar that's going to come out, they lie. Nobody really supports each other. They really don't. Right. It's more of like, I do want you to do well, right? Some girls, but I but I still want to be the best one, right. right? And then it's like, well, actually, I just don't like you. And we all don't like you. So everybody's uh, just kind of like battling each other. And then in our own little world, right, we have this person has a problem with this one, this one's like this one, this one, this one doesn't want to fight this one, and this one's lying about this one, this one's just always going to get on social media. There's all types of problems that we have with each other. Everyone's, you know, down each other's throats. And then on top of it, we're all fighting with the guys. You know, at the same yeah. time. Too. On top, all yeah, that. Yeah, on top of that. All the other yeah, so we fight with each other, and then we fight with the guys. It's like crab getting out of the... Yeah, and I feel like if, if, if it was a little bit... If, we, if everybody... I mean, I know there's going to be issues with people no matter what, because that's just... Guys have problems with each other, too. But if we were just more supportive in general, all the way around with each other, I think we would move a lot smoother. What was... Uh, what was going on? What, what, is, is there anything going on between Cali and Houston? Oh, Cali and Houston? Yeah. With, with you, are you talking about boxing wise? Yeah. Man, yeah, because me and Sinisa, uh, Estrada. Uh -huh. So she's from LA, and there's a. Uh, Wait a minute, uh, what? California? She's in California? Houston, Texas? She's about well, she's with the boxing, it. well, because. I'm out the loop. <laughs> I'm giving the scoop. What's kind of going on? <laughs> yeah. Jerry started to trickle and stuff, but what's going on is that LA, uh, Sinisa's from LA, I'm from Houston, but I was in Cali a lot, right? Always boxing in California. But it became like a thing where every time she talks about me, or every time she says something about boxing or whatever, it's like, oh, well, I'm from East LA, and I'm from LA, and like, it's like, 
so what? I'm from Houston. You don't know shit about how we do it. You ain't repping Los Angeles. You don't, you don't right. know anything. Like, I know you, and you don't have to do it. Just because your dad has issues doesn't mean that you're something right. that you're not. And it's it became like a, well, Houston, like, back me a little bit. So it became like a L.A. Right. and then Houston people from Houston kind of started but to But you didn't want that, did you? I kind of just, I, it's not that I, I didn't even think about it. I was just like, like, I didn't understand what was the big deal about, oh, I'm just from LA. and then everybody from LA is always like talking shit to me like about, oh, that's me, is going to beat me, this uh, and that. And it's like, yeah, that's, and we're from LA. It's like, okay, like, cool, I'm from right. Houston, I don't understand. And it became a thing where it's like LA or Houston. And then I was just like, all right, this is how we're playing the game, then we don't know people from Houston right. at all. Right. So then we'll play this game, and uh, and I started to like ask Houston to kind of just support me, and I think that's what I've been kind of right. pushing towards a lot okay. is like Houston support me, Houston Absolutely. support me, uh, because it's just a lot of look out, H Town. We gonna stand up and continue to support Marlene wherever the fuck we go, to LA, to New York, oh, yeah. whatever. <laughs> She's taking all of the third coast with us. So clearly, clearly, yeah. I'm from New Orleans, right? You get it. So. But I love Houston. I've been here 20 years. I love Houston. I turn around, I rep Houston. Oh, I love it here, right? And I get shit. I get people talking about he don't like Houston. He said Houston is this and that. I'm like, you, sissy, hey, what you talking about, man? I, I'm repping Houston like all oh, that. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Whatever you do, this this podcast is about you. If you knew my diverse ass background, it, 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 it's hard enough just being a, a, a father and a husband. And you know, with your kids, then people putting all these labels on you, man. So all you can do is just be the best you and rep, rep your hometown the way they rep it. And uh, we gonna rep, yeah. we gonna rep it all, man. You some have, 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 I know the support. Have you felt? The I think it's coming a, a, a lot now. She it's don't see it. Better. She don't see it. She don't get on that social media. <laughs> I tell you, I, I try to I stay on. Yeah, like I, I don't even it. have it on my phone. Because it like I kind of wanted to stay on. Yeah. While we're at war. Yeah. We're at war yeah. right now. You gotta fight. Yeah. You gotta off of it. Yeah. I just don't. Sometimes it's too. Like I don't even keep it on my phone because I know like it's just a habit. It's like, a to, yeah. yeah. Just to look whatever, even if you're looking at memes and stuff. But I try not to to look at it too much. But I have noticed because I've been solidly back. Because when I was in Houston before, I mean, I had all the sport in the world. But I was I went MIA because I was. Colorado Springs, and I was in California, I was in Diego. Yeah, I was just trying to, you know, figure everything out, like, just becoming who I am and stuff, and then now that I'm back, it's, you know, I feel like it's growing again, and it's 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 good to be home, though, it really is, I feel way better here than, you than anywhere else, you yeah. Do, as opposed to when you was uh, in California? Yeah, I love Houston, um, I was, I had always said, like, oh, well, no one wants to stay in Houston, you know, no one's saying Houston. No one's saying Houston. That's a lot. Yeah, and it's and it really has because it was Dude, just. I went up like a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying you don't want to be in Houston. It really it's a mindset. Like it was like that. Yeah, and because I, I grew up here, I was, I was, you know, I was born and raised. Just an unknown. No. Yeah. You know, so when you're in a good situation, you don't know how. You don't, man. Is to you I recognize it out the gate. We staying here. <laughs> We're not going nowhere. This well, it's just the that. people are different, and I Talk know this place. You know, like I know it here. So it's I, growing, and anything anything that you might be looking for out there is growing here. It's yeah, it's, become a, it's a huge market. Boxing, the boxing boxing's city. really big here. Yeah, it's, and it's getting bigger. Yeah, it's getting, and it's, bigger. Getting and bigger. it's just gonna get bigger, man. I, like, I, I don't know if y'all seen my see? last Facebook post, but I'm talking about. Well, Lindy. She probably did. <laughs> and I'm talking that. about how we. I've seen these amateurs do good. GoPro, which is in your category, I've seen these amateurs that do good are, are just get turning pro. Some of these amateurs are about to turn pro, and that some of these little because I just came from the junior, the junior uh, Olympics, the kids, you got 10, 11, 12 year olds doing a lot better than they were a few years ago, and now we got some little eight year olds that are about to get it going, and now I see some one and two year olds that are <laughs> about to get be. going. That's going. Yeah, be. so. Boxing and juice yeah, is boxing. only going to get well, that. Well, it's always really been big in Texas, but it's just getting bigger and bigger. Texas, New York, and California are always like the major ones. Well, we're, we're, we're uh, well represented uh, at every level of boxing, uh, professional, amateur, uh, nationally, everything. It, we, we're putting out successful uh, 
product, if you yeah, will. Yeah. You know. So, and that's why I think that that girl from California, um, where all of it actually started, because I'm on social media all the time. And so I, every time she's about to fight, gonna fight, she throws Marlene's name out there. Yeah, and, 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 I, and all that is because she needs a fight like her, right. even if even if the girl loses, just to get some kind of so, recognition. So she only got popular understand that. Me, yeah. the I, and I've seen. I've so seen understand that. Leave it where it's at. If y'all fight or whatever the case may be, I'll fight. Fight again. So, huh? I'll we're fighting. Yeah. So good. Yeah. And I did tell everybody. That's when she's gonna take that. Yeah, it out exactly. There. I try not to, and that's kind of the main thing that I, that's because she she got a lot more popular than me, but because she's I don't say anything, more. she got signed with Golden Boy, so Recently, I could, right? so I could be her. Yeah, that was the thing. Uh, and it's like once we fight, like she knows whatever, but people don't know. And I don't really say anything. I say really, I try not to talk because it does. All it does is piss me off. And it's just like, why am I gonna like get my it's hard enough off? Being a mom, yeah, a I got, I got bigger problems yeah. and, and bigger. It's hard things. enough. But she, so she always talks and talks and talks and talks. So her, her social media is, is growing, and she stayed busy for the year that I was out. But the, the reason she got signed, when, oh, we were supposed to fight in December. Uh, but I got pregnant in April. So we're supposed to fight in December, and that was her, she had a year contract, and her contract ended in December, and we're supposed to fight in December. She didn't really even catch that dream. But then when I got pregnant, what they did is they put her on a, a she's on a fight to fight contract. So people, the media and everybody doesn't know her contract. She's on a fight to fight contract, so if she loses, she's gone. Mm -hmm. And I have a five year, you're going on seven year full blown real contract. And they're kind of just, they just have her into breathe her out, is basically. Oh, tell the truth, you ain't got married and had babies, so you didn't have to fight this girl. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's what I've been. Oh, that, that, you know that's been said. You know that's been said. They, they have that's all kinds of ideas. Silly. How did it feel? How, how, how can you get to even get a golden boy on assignment? Uh, they reached out. Um, I had well, I was actually in San Mateo, and I was uh, working with that guy that's with Victor Conti, who owns that supplement company. And he's really good friends with one of the reporters who's friends with Mario Lopez. They have a, the three knockdown world together. I listen uh, to it all the yeah. time. The podcast? Yeah, yeah, the podcast. So um, they found out that I didn't want to be amateur anymore. I was looking to turn pro. And I was talking to Richard Schaefer first, mm -hmm. was the first one. And then I had uh, I had been talking to some of Rock Nation's people to have like a meeting and stuff. And they heard that I was kind of just quiet. Really? I wasn't in a hurry. I was kind of just like, let me see what's going on. And um, they found out, when they found out, they asked if I would go to the office to meet with uh, Eric Gomez, who's the CEO. And uh, we met there, and I was still in the middle of Schaefer and, and Golden Boy and kind of figured it out like So that. it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't an instant guess? No, no, no. I wanted to figure out what was better for me, because I didn't have to turn pro, you know? Obviously, it was just, I just wanted to keep boxing. Right. And I wanted to keep boxing with a clear head. And USA Boxing and me had like an ugly fallout, like rock, like losses and all this crazy oh. stuff. So it was kind of like not a good place for me anymore. And I wanted to, to, I just wanted to grow up, you know. And I think because I was, because boxing is such a big part of my life, I didn't. <laughs> it's gonna sound so weird. I didn't consider myself an adult until I turned pro. Mm. I that felt like sense. I was still a baby. You know, and I was like, man, like I'm a grown ass woman in a big world, <laughs> yeah. and I need, to, I need to pick, you know, put my girl, big girl pants on and like get this done. So I wanted to turn pro, but I wanted to do it like in the right way. And I've heard so many stories, I've had so many friends, and you know, all the guys that that turn pro and all the stories you hear right. about, you know, putting being shelled and missteps. And, yeah, and the this, this, that's another thing with this sport. It's, it, it's, it's you're you're always one decision away from that's it. Yeah. You know, bad, bad fight, bad management, bad promoter, bad anything. You know, one decision away from uh, uh, blocking your own self, let yeah. alone everybody else trying to block it. Make it move, like, I wish I would have known. And once you sign your life away, it's like, you're. That's it? Yeah, you know, gonna, nothing's going to happen after that. So it took a while. I think we. You know, How old were you when you signed? Uh, it was, I, I signed at the end of 2016. Yeah. So, um, I don't know, it's turned 27 or something. Yeah. So it was a, uh, it was it was good though. It, Golden Boy treats me really well. And then Did you go back and tell your dad? You see, this is why. <laughs> <laughs> he, I never how had you like to. Now? Now. <laughs> I, I never had to. I think he, he started to like just yeah. be like, oh my god. When everything started, when I started to qualify, and everything got very real. You know, right. like those moments where it's like, if you lose this fight, your dream is gone. 
you know, those fights were really scary. And once we got over those, and he was kind of just like. So your, your dad, your dad Mexican? Mm-hmm. My dad, both my parents are um, from Mexico. Okay, so how was it going to the Mexican uh, household? It was, was it? She was fired. It, 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 it was a huge fire. It was beating everybody up. Did your mom work? Uh, did she it, stay at home? It was take typical. Care of the kids? No, she. So my mom did work, okay. um, but my but she was responsible for all the kids uh-huh. too, though. So and my dad was always working, uh-huh. and he didn't start staying home until I was like eleven, and then he got a, he got um, a, a promotion. He got to kind of pick more when he was at home, more more in the house than he was before. And then what language did you speak in the house before? Well, at first we spoke Spanish, but then it turned into like Spanglish because my mom wanted to speak English to us. Uh-huh. So when I was like in uh, first grade kindergarten, I didn't know enough English to be in the oh, English class, right. and I didn't know enough Spanish to be in the Spanish class Ooh. because I I didn't know English until I was like five or six, and then my mom started speaking English, and I got kind of confused. So my mom decided to speak primarily English. So as it trickles down, my sister can speak both. My older brother was a little better. I'm a little worse, and my brother speaks almost like no Spanish. No yeah. Time. So yeah. that's kind of how it's no basis. Yeah. But my dad, um, it was a little bit better for me than my older sister because my dad was still hardcore Mexican, and you know, burglar bars on the windows, girls' room by by uh, by his room. What's that Houston with you? Huh? What's that Houston? Um, I'm like on the southeast side, so okay. like off Monroe. Uh, if you're going towards like downtown or Galveston, if you exit Monroe, um, I was zoned so, to southeast. So it wasn't River Oak like everyone else. No, <laughs> yeah, no, where yeah, no, everybody thinks I was born. No, no, I grew up in the southeast side, and that was kind of how we did things. I guess it wasn't too bad for me because my sister had it worse, and then he learned a lot from my sister on me, and I didn't give him as hard of a time. Um, with boys and everything else like my sister. Did the boxing bring y'all together a little closer maybe? For me and my dad? Yeah. 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 yeah, my dad was like the person in my life. I really didn't have a strong relationship with my mom because she was like always busy with the kids right. and working and she was like really mean, you know, it was just more, it was like that tough Mexican love, yeah, you know, it was like, up yeah, it wasn't yeah. very like, oh, were you okay? Right. How was your day? Yeah. No, none yeah. of that. It was like, what you know, yeah, like, yeah, go get your mother. Yeah, yeah. like I will beat you. Yeah. Type stuff. <laughs> so that's how I was closer to my dad and I was just in and out of the gym or always in the gym and just, it was pretty, my childhood was pretty boring, you know, I didn't do a lot. I don't remember a lot about it except being in the boxing gym. And learning, learning everything about life through the gym is really how I did things. And so and how, how many amateur fights did you uh, finish your amateur career? I lost count when I hit like a hundred, like three or something. So I was like well into like I, I didn't reach two hundred for sure, but I think I was like one in the like one fifty, one sixty, wow. something like that. Because every because I was traveling a lot too um, for USA Boxing. It had me like twenty. 12, 13, 14, I was leaving like nine months out of the year, and I was always like fighting, fighting, fighting. So there was tons of people and fights that I had. That's why I laugh when people like say that, like I haven't been, like I don't know a lot yet. And I mean, I've had more rounds than like all these girls, like it's crazy. I remember when, uh, was your games the London game or the London? I remember they did a special here and, and about your dad and you and stuff, and I watched it and, and, and the amount of uh, sacrifice he did with the working and stuff, man. Like, you didn't have all for so long. and uh, Yeah, so anybody talking about she did come on, man. Yeah, I seen it. I it seen your dad on the TV. Yeah, yeah, you know, the sacrifices dad. they all made. Yeah, if I if I didn't have the father, I had a definitely... Everything God really said... Like, I had this crazy vision and this weird addiction to boxing. But I honestly, God did line me up to do what I needed to do. Because if I didn't, if I wouldn't have met Rudy when I met Rudy so early, there was no one that was going to pay attention to a female fighter so early on back then. And they, no, everyone would have laughed at me. But for some reason, the boxing gym that my dad walked me into just happened to be that one open-minded person that I could actually. Was that by luck or, or or you guys looked up? No, it was just by luck. My dad said, I, re- I remember it like it was yesterday. My dad, I was in the living room with my brothers. And he walked in, and he was, because uh, he had just got that promotion, he was home all the time, and he walked in, and he was like, hey guys, guess what, I was driving by, and I saw that there's a boxing gym, and they just opened it up down the street, and we need to go right now, register, but he wasn't talking to me, 
It's talking to my brothers. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't talking to me. You know? Yeah, that's how it was. You doing. thought it was. <laughs> I was like, yeah, it's for me, you know? And that was the first time that he had let me in the gym. Because he had took my brothers to other gyms before. But it was it was that time that he let me let me try. Because I was like, me, right? I'm going to go to He's like, well, if they let you enroll, you know, I don't think yeah. so. But when we <laughs> got there, they were like, sure, if you pay the dues, you know, if you pay, if you pay, we got to pay, we'll take did it. They, did, we'll they take have, did they have any people pro fighters? Oh yeah, it was Christy yeah, Martin. Christy Martin. You right there. She, she, she was first. She was big, big when I was say Christy, but yeah. she was like a gimmick. Don't she can really fight? But she was a gimmick on the Tyson shows. Remember the, the Tony yeah. Mangles daughter? It wasn't really pushing nobody else. And uh, and uh, so you didn't have anyone to no. really say, "I want to be like her." No, I didn't. I, it uh, was all just. There was one girl. Tell me, did you watch a woman that I was impressed with way back then, man? And, and she what? just. No, she just did. I like Animal too. Lucia Riker, man. Yeah, they said right. that. Yeah, it's Lucia Riker. She, she, she didn't get no shine in the states, man. They wouldn't. They would. I was like, no. I, I know she don't whoop some of these dudes. I know for sure. Yeah. She whoop, but she didn't get. She didn't get yeah, no shine there. She was. She was awesome. But everybody was afraid of her. So yeah. She didn't really get to show anybody. She was bad. She but, was. She was good. But she, and, and Wolf really didn't get the shine she could have got. It, it went from what Christy Martin, Layla. That's it. Yeah, that's it was about those, it. those were the four as far as that yeah. had some sort of name. I think that's, 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 it's amazing because you have to create your own vision. A vision that really hasn't, right, because you have, you have yeah. Chrissy Martin with that. But, I didn't not, know that they not, existed. Right. Yeah, it's not like, yeah, that's what I mean. It's, it's not like you could have went, it's not, you could have went on YouTube to watch the video. <laughs> it's not like you could even go to, to the flea market yeah, and get me a check. They didn't exist. No, it didn't exist. It didn't exist. So you're still part of the pioneers. Yeah, yeah. you're yeah. like you're you're making it up as you go along. If that's the right word, it's, but your vision is like you're you're. Yeah, it was a, it it's was evolved. You came to get what the early girls did because it's the foundation, but there's no roadmap for y'all. Right. There is no. Yeah. Especially with advanced. technology and the ways advanced TV, and all of a sudden you got programs and boxing. Like oh. It's hers for her to take. Like, and I'm yeah, saying yeah. that to say this: you're gonna have millions of little girls. They're gonna watch. I have a six-year-old daughter. Oh, it's a different. It's going to be. And I'm yeah. sure she's gonna be watching your videos. Your she's gonna. She can ten ten years from now. She's gonna go back. She's like. Right, right, absolutely. Wow. Girls just so so. I take a quick second and talk to them. Ten years from now, <laughs> they're gonna be looking back and watching, saying the little six, you know, eleven year olds, twelve year olds. They're gonna be wondering, going through, you know, is this what I want to do? Yeah. Where, where I don't, we don't know where the women boxing will be at. But I'm hoping it stays, and that's another thing, you know, it's so, it's scary to me, because I'm, because, man, I lived it, I lived all of it, um, it's scary to even uh, say it out loud that it's still going to be here, you don't want to jinx it, you know, it's right. like this fragile, like, little yeah. baby but that you don't want to, yeah. but it is dollars and cents, I mean, yeah, at the, of, at the end of the day, if we don't have someone, like, the like, WNBA. like, like, a, yeah. like a, like a Ronda Rousey come out of the boxing, and it's feel like, it'll kind of, trickle down and up again, trickle. we need to be a lot more solid. And I think everybody's just trying, well, everyone just wants that big breakthrough for the women. And we're kind of, we're pushing it and we're close. And I just think, I know it's gonna happen because there's a lot of talent Give out there. Give them that message. They're, They're too good, good man. Tell them. These girls, the girls out there, they just need to keep fighting and they need to like stay focused. And I think- And stick together. They need to, they need to support each other. Support each like other. you're not in the gym and you're not each other's competition. Your only competition is when you get in the ring and yourself, really. But besides that, you, there's it's possible for more than one female to be successful at one time. Yes. And I think that's where we get confused. So for the girls out there, you know, there can be hundreds of female boxers that are killing it at the same time. Absolutely. And and, and that will be more the truth then for them than it is now. Because right now I think we are waiting for that one, and then it'll be more to follow. In fact, it's got to happen. Because you need people to fight each other, so you got to have. Yeah, you have to have the big rivalries yeah. and uh, and and That'll what everybody wants to see. 
So I think that would be. So back in like around 2010, there were hardly any little girls, any hardly little girls uh, boxing. Right. 2012, 2014, 2016, 2018, all of a sudden there's a bunch of kids. Yeah. And I just want you to know though, a big reason why that's happening is because you females, uh, when y'all are going through the Olympics, open those doors. Yeah, they didn't think that was a thing. So like, yeah, yeah. So so now these guys are like, man, they can win medals. They can fight. Yeah. All right. Now so let's open a little bit more doors. Now let's open up. Now look at now compared to a couple years ago. Yeah, and it's because too, like the the dads have to accept that their little girls wanted to fight, which is you know it's still kind of like oh yeah, it's like (laughs) I don't know. So and then if you didn't know boxing, it'd be like, what you want to box? That's you know what's wrong with you? Why you want to do that? We could get hurt. And those types of things, but USA Boxing actually told me that the when I, my campaign for Cover Girl came out, that the registration is all over the United States. Right. Right. Um, and that's why those right. things are necessary. So, so the people who say, "Oh, she's just a pretty girl, she can't tag," mm-hmm. so what? You got to do those things as well to, for the girls to see. Yeah, yeah, for the girls to see. I'm I'm cool with uh, the fact that women can can be both and, and use Absolutely. both. Because that's just what it is, and that's who we are. And I think uh, a lot of girls get the girls that can't pull it off get upset, you right. know. And it's just and and I think that's kind of where the whole support thing comes in. It's like you know what, if that's your image and that's what you do, then good for you. And I think that's where it get it gets misconstrued as a negative thing. I think a lot of girls like to feel beautiful. They like to feel good, and they like to get in the ring and like kill it too. They like to to just be a freaking badass. It doesn't have to be either or. It doesn't, right? and it doesn't, and I feel like sometimes the girls who can't do that get a little bit upset about it, and then the girls who are pretty get mad because they don't get respect like the other girls do. So it's always like, you, 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 you want not. what you can't have, and it's like, instead of everybody just being like, look, that's you, and that's how you do things, cool. And but, but for all the little girls out there that's listening to the podcast, yeah. as long as you got her drive and determination, right. it don't matter which side you look on. You think I'm gonna turn them away when they yeah. walk in there? No, man, come on. And if she outwork your ass, boy, go sit down, man. Go sit down. That's, that, it's just Girls work hard, though. Yeah. They work oh, hard. It's not hard. You I know, I've noticed that. that. I didn't want to say that because I didn't no. want people with you to stuff a girl. But no. I've noticed that um, in camps or just in the gym and things that I've seen, that girls tend to, to work a lot. They're a lot more passionate. They take a lot more person. One, I gotta say now, one of the best. I used to say the best, but I gotta say one now because my other guys get mad. But one of the one of the best fighters I ever developed ever was a, was a girl, a little girl, and, and we're talking 2010, 2011, and there was nowhere to go for, and we couldn't find fights. I had to move to Atlanta and get fight, and it, and, it, and, it, and it slowly but surely, she fell off because there's a, there's a ceiling, coach. There's a ceiling to this. What do I do? And and and. Three, four years later, Marlene and, and Clarissa and Michaela, Eric, and I'm going, man, you know, timing is everything, but but it's, it's you guys got to, you guys had to do this. They had, those, those other girls had to do it in the late 90s. Y'all had to do it the latest fundamental uh, uh, roll down so, so that the little girls could come in and right. say, I can fight. And the ones who's cute, be cute and fight. If you're not cute, that ain't your thing. Cut your hair like a mohawk, dye green or whatever. Come fight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You still got to have your lane, man. You be you. You be you. Because I know any trainer worth his worth his salt just wants a good fighter, and he's gonna protect you. Yep. That's my job. Do you think about your legacy? I do at times. I do at times, but I I don't feel like I'm ready yet to think about it too much. I feel like it's a process, That's and, heavy, huh? and, and, yeah. I, and, I, and I've learned that everything's a process, and I don't want to get too caught up in what could be, what what do I see, and like who will I become, and take away from like who I am right now. Well, that's the, the process thing, of what that, I am. That, that your legacy is your process, and but if I go on thinking about it too much. Uh, yeah, I don't think you yeah, should no, even no, think no. about that right now. Man. You got bigger, well, bigger fish to fry. As far as as far as understanding, look, you're you're a good fighter, okay? You have that uh, and notoriety. People know who you are. That goes with responsibility. You know, as much as as much as you know, 
you might want to reflect it, but it's also important, you know, not to focus on it and, and dwell on it, but be aware of it, right? Because, you know, we're, we're, what you're doing, whether you want to accept it or not, it's going to have a lasting impact than when we find something. Yeah. Everything that you've done on the amateur level, uh, level everything you've done on the Olympic level, what you're doing. So what you're saying is be conscious of be kind. How can she not be though? I mean, yeah. That's what I was saying. Yeah, that's what I was asking. Yeah. I think just like at the end of the day, as long as I, as I know, because I know that out of everybody I've seen, and I'm talking about girls that I'm like, man, you're amazing and I don't see them anymore. Or girls that no one talks about that I've seen that I don't even want to talk about because they're just beasts. You know, like out of all the people that I've seen, I feel that like pound for pound, I'm probably one of the best girls that exist. Okay. And I feel like as long as people know that and I carry myself correctly as far, because I get pissed off and I know it's probably going to be, if if I have a downfall as far as how people perceive me and how I, how I end up going down in the books, I would say that will be the number one thing that I'm afraid of because I lose my shit really fast. And I, my, and I snap, you know, and I don't want anybody to make me snap. Because right. when they do, it's going to be, people okay. are going to be like, oh, my God, Marlene, what side. is going <laughs> on? Yep. But I'll and, tell you what, they should expect it because anybody <coughs> as successful as you, there's going to be something inside driving you like that. But so you, I, 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 but that's, that's, but you have to be grateful with it because there are little little girls, and uh, especially it's more important to me, little girls and people that, 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 that want positivity for me. Right. And it's like, Sometimes it's overwhelming because it's like, man, I don't feel real positive right now, you know? Like, I'm sorry, I feel there's this and this and this going on, but at the end of the day, they're not going to see any of that. They're not going right. to feel any of that. So when I snap, they're just going to be like, oh, man, like, I thought, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, I thought you were cool. This girl is freaking nuts, you know? And that's really not the majority of me, but it tends to come out because of because it's so sticky, and you got to kind of figure out. And there's been times where I'm like, how the heck do I handle this because I'm just so upset. Do you have it. someone that you go to other than your husband? You know, which is huge, right? Yeah. And your coaches, uh, but like a peer. I a don't. A peer in boxing. I don't. I have a, my, one of my best friends, uh, Fred and Sean uh, Cruz, she actually fought Clarissa oh. um, for her first fight, for her pro debut, and they were in the amateurs. They would fight each other all the time. So uh, Clarissa was, I mean, Fred and Sean was like the big thing before Clarissa came in is what happened. And I'm really good friends with her. So we'll talk a lot about, you know, man, maybe just don't worry about that. Let's see this, let's see that. But for the most part, I feel like I tend to give more advice than people giving advice to me. People always come to me uh, for stuff. Do you ever get tired of being a strong person? No, because a lot of times I feel like I have the answer. Like I'm a little, mentally, I'm a little bit farther than everybody. So no one can really give me an, an answer to everything. Like, uh, for example, like Michaela. I don't get along with her now or anything, but when we were growing up, uh, she had hit this uh, this this moment where she was about to start getting endorsements and she didn't really know what to do, but I had already been there. So she was like, hey, this is the story I tell people, but it's not necessarily true. Should I continue, blah, blah, blah. Wow. And I was like, yeah, you know, it's a good story because no one's gonna know, just keep doing what you're doing and everybody likes you for that, just keep Keep doing what you're doing. That's what she uses. That's what she takes with her. And that's how she's gotten a lot of the stuff that she's gotten. But it, and it tends to be the case in a lot of cases where it's things that I've already done, uh, even if they're my peers. But I'm just a little bit uh, ahead of everybody, so I, I do reach a little bit of confusion. For, for do you uh, do you have any uh, relationship with Clarissa this year? Uh, yeah, I do. Y'all, because uh, y'all was on the same uh, yeah. squad. Yeah, right? me and Clarissa have a love hate relationship. We have a love because she she's really strong headed and I'm really strong headed but I'm older so I'm like how old is Clarissa? She's 24. Oh, she's wow. a yeah. baby. So when I met Clarissa she was 17 mm. and I was like I think I'm like 22 or 23 something like that. But um, so it's always like oh yeah but you're a baby you know and then she's always like no I'm not you know it's more <laughs> of like that type of relationship but big she, big sister does. yeah. But she's done so much in boxing and like in such a small amount of time she, that you just have to have respect for her. And I'm big on respect, regardless of like agree or disagree with you. And again, it's I think it's being so obsessed with boxing that if I can respect you as a fighter, then ultimately I respect you. And and that's kind of how how it works for me. So I think that she's always 
the way that she handles herself outside the ring, sometimes people don't tend to like it. And she knows that, and she doesn't want to change it. But that's her, you know? If she didn't know, that's different. But she chooses what she likes to do and doesn't like to do, and she's confident in herself, and she's a great fighter. It hasn't affected her performances. So I have a lot of respect for her. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of you, love. I'm a big fan of Double Dogs. And I, just as a fan, man, I, I, I get defensive. Like, the comments and shit. I don't know the girl. But I'm sitting there going like, man, I, I've seen her backstory too. Do you yeah. know it, Greg? Right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Do you know that backstory? I, I can understand that a lot. Because even when I, because we don't hate each other or anything. It's just, you know, how you doing, you know, whatever. Right, right, right. And so with her, regardless of how I feel about her personally, it's when people start to get on her, I get really defensive for her too. Like it's like I want to kind of just like. So I'm grab not her. on the wrong track, not knowing her. you. You know yeah. it. I feel like I want to grab her sometimes and just kind of like shoot it, her it. because it's it's hard. Because I'm like, man, uh, whatever me and her have going on or have had going on or don't, it's just like, man, you guys don't even know what this right. girl has gone through at all. And like I can see when people see her how things can come across, but I know her and I know kind of what she means by them sometimes and. Sometimes it's like, man, Clarissa, why'd you say that? Or why'd you do that? But at the end of the day, I know Clarissa. And if you were to tell her in private, why'd you say that? Why'd you? She's like, because I felt that way. You know, that because I'm not going to let them talk to me that way or do this to me. And she's just very, you know, hard-headed and does what she does. And she knows that this is who I am. If you like it, good. And if you don't, oh well. And that I get really defensive for it, too. I think people really need to lay off. And it, it, I can see. I'm really proud of her though, because I think a lot. I don't know if I would have been able to yeah. take the heat that she takes and still stay in contact. She with gets it, man. She gets a lot of heat, man, from all all kind of angles that don't even be said. But I and and me just being a fan and, and seeing the seeing the documentaries and stuff, you going, man, you are who you are, right? So you can't, you know, there's 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 those moments like you could have handled that better, but at the same time. It's she, just, she, she wasn't be what she was. Right, she right, right. right. And, she, and, and sitting here talking to her, listening to her backstory. You know, I'm already defensive for the naysayers and stuff. They say, and then so you're just more defensive. You're more like, man, you guys are talking. Go get a life, man. Go yeah. get a life, man. Do your thing. Yeah. It's, 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 it's crazy. <laughs> because I think you're like, not her. Or if you're a fan, you don't have to be so personal. Yeah. And I think that's the one thing. Like, if you want to talk about someone's boxing, or you want to talk about their performance, or what they did and didn't do in camp, or, you know, their drum driving, that's that's one thing. But if you talk about someone's personal life, yeah. and their looks, and things that have nothing to do with boxing, that's the stuff that it's I It's meant to I just hurt. Like that's what you're doing. Yeah. It's meant to be derogatory. And malicious. I like that. Malicious. There you go. And there's a lot of that. The, the world's full of it now. With social media, it's hard to know what they call. What is it? Keep working. Yeah, thousand, and, then, and then they want to block you. Yeah, I know. Right? You. They make up lies on, about you, and then they block you so you don't have. That yeah, happened to me before, just recently, actually. It's a huge fight in life for her. That girl can fight, man. That hammer girl can fight, man. Yeah, hammer can fight. I, so, <laughs> so the thing is what I learned to in boxing is I have to stick with my first instinct. Mm. So yep. what happens when I first If you overthink it. Yeah, or I watch you change yourself. You convince yourself. Yeah, I watch I'm watching Hammer too much. I see all the stuff she's doing, running in the snow and shit. And like <laughs> you know, I'm like Rocky style stuff, crack face in her mouth and all that. I'm like, man, maybe she could do good. But I, on my first instinct was just like there's just no way. Like uh Hammer doesn't have a good chin, right? Clarissa's not the hardest puncher, but she's also super sharp. And she's overwhelming, and I just don't think that Hammer's skill set is strong enough to keep Clarissa off of that many rounds. I think if it was a four-round fight, we're talking whole different ballgame because Hammer what does. Is it, uh, eight, ten, 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 ten. Yeah, this is a unified middleweight championship with the Earth. All, all, all the belts on the line. Let's get the predictions out. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm excited I'm, too. Yeah, yeah, I'm big excited, man. Who me? Yeah, man, I'm gonna tell you something, man. I, I ain't never been scared to talk. Uh. Like Marlene, I watch Hamill, and she can fight. She's real good, she's a threat, she's all that, right? But I'm kind of going against my grain with my first mind, saying, but you, uh, 
Clarissa's the one who tell me all that shit, man. She's gonna keep biting down and fighting and punching and throwing punches and punches and, and chop her ass down, man. That's what I think. So I, I think she's gonna be in the fight. Hey, Hammer's gonna be in that fight early. He's gonna be a stop if you're gonna go off that. Well, I see, I, I can't pick knockouts, man, because being a trainer, now I have a whole nother dynamic working in my head of what, because I seen, uh, 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 no, no, Clarissa, since she's been with this guy, I haven't seen horses with food to me. And now I don't know that guy and I'm not knocking. Yeah, I just I just a while ago I said you'd be a great trainer and it just don't fit. You don't I've seen more amateurish uh that head stand right there throwing three or four shots and just being right there inside the girls uh range that I don't like, right? Uh maybe it's just the getting no process. Maybe she comes out like gangbusters. But I think uh, Hamill will probably shoot that jab early and, and, and cause a little problem, but the risk is going to fight for this. We're going to get a split decision off. Yeah, we're going to win. I, I think, um, so I agree with you about the way she's been boxing, but I, I think he tried to slow her down is what he did because she's really fast. So for her weight and stuff and the way she moves, she's really good at breaking and like breaking everyone's like line and punching, right? So she'll break down the middle and she'll come to the side and she'll be on one side of her angle and she's fast. Mm -hmm. And I think he tried to tone her down. I think he tried to make her less fast and more precise. And punching think, in between instead yeah, of just... Yeah, and, and I don't think she's figured it out yet and I don't think it's a good move to make. So right now, I think he should have kind of... Let her be her. Later. Let, let her be her. First. Yeah, let, let her be her. Her. first and, and then... But that's also, Clarissa will figure that out. You always go back to 10% of what you know Chicken through, so I'm pretty sure she'll, she'll forget everything he yeah. taught her. And she is great. Yeah. She is great. She'll, she'll, just, fight. she'll just go back to, to what she knows. But I think for sure, there's I don't think anybody's going to get knocked out on this for sure. Because um, Hammer's betting that she could probably break Clarissa down because Clarissa got dropped by uh, uh, what's Gabriel? What's Gabriel, uh, that was a flash. Yeah. She just she, caught, but, she caught her with, a, with the uppercut. Right, and when she caught her with the uppercut, that's a really different punch to get hit yeah. with because you don't see it coming because it kind of knock, knocks you off your butt, you know. And it, it, it's more of like a sting and, and, it's, and it's quick. And Hammer's not going to catch her with that because Hammer's not low to the ground and Hammer's not going to catch her with the uppercut. But so Hammer's thinking that she has a weak chin, but if Hammer's catching her down the middle, you're not going to catch anybody in the same way that you catch someone with the uppercut. So I don't see her getting getting. Were well, you impressed how she handled that knockdown? Yeah, she was quick. Calm, she, just yeah. and, and she came back and yeah, she, she, she handled it together. like a champ. Yeah. And I just don't think that I think Hammer's betting that she's gonna be able to crack her, but I don't think that I think um, Sorcerer can take punches really well. I just think that because she got hit with that punch, okay. yeah, it was a tricky punch, and I, I think I think yeah. uh, Hammer's yeah. mistaken. I think Curse is definitely gonna win. I just don't know if Hammer is going to make it easier or hard and how long that's going to last. She's going to have to keep her out. The fighting with her is not going to win. She's going to have to keep her out full time. She's going to have to keep moving. She's going to have to so, so that's two on the good side. Okay. What's, 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 what's the longest uh, Clarissa's fight? She's, she's gone the whole distance. distance every, every yeah, time. she's not a hard hitter. All of them are said, what, two? She had two yeah, sides of the TKO. And by overwhelming, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm going to go ahead and say, you know, He's a she, contrarian now. He's a contrarian. <laughs> she, she got a big boxing IQ. That's her best asset. So I'm riding with them too. Yeah. That's three. Yeah, I'm riding with them. Yeah, four. Okay. Pops, what you got, man? Clarissa. Five bananas. Five bananas. Five bananas. Five bananas. Hey, we had, uh, man, I apologize. Uh, what's Garcia's first name? Jesse. 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 Great guy. He's great. He came to you talking. Uh, her name that came up. She's like, yeah, man, she just had a baby. She's back in the room. And I said, well, what she have planned? He goes, man, I asked her. He goes, I just saw her the other day. I asked her, he goes, uh, Marlene, what you got planned? And I love what, what he said your, your response was. You look at him and you say, you come to it all. You want everything that, that, that is owed to you. Yeah, I tend to talk a lot more shit with people I know. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So we talked about your childhood, we talked about your family career. April 25th, right? Mm -hmm. April, like, April 25th. Yeah, we're in April. Okay. I didn't find them like 10 April days. Where's the fight? In uh, Vegas. Oh, we're in Indio, California, at the Fantasy Springs. So you fight now in 12 days. California. Yeah. 
Now this is not California. Y'all, this is look out, Cali. Look out, uh, LA. We ain't got no beef with y'all. All right. We, this is a great girl. But if y'all get out of line, I do what they need. Yeah. Line. If y'all get out of line, you know, we're gonna step up. But look, it's all love. So when she out there fighting next week, y'all show me some love too. Now y'all come out here to the Texas. We'll give y'all some southern Texas, uh, southern uh, hospitality. But you're fighting April 25th in, in, in Cali. Who's your opponent? Um, it's a girl from Venezuela. I try not to think of, about that as a, as a, as a person too much. So I try not to think of her as a person. Okay. So mm -hmm. I don't like to take. I don't like to remember names that much. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, she's from Venezuela. She has a, a the winning record, but she does have some losses on her. She's fought Um and she's right-handed. She's a little bit busy over a little while, but they said it'd be a good test. So we'll see how that goes. And this is a. a it's for the NABO. Yeah, yeah it's that. for the NABO. So it's powerful. Yeah, it's for the NABO, and then we're hoping to get a world title shot pretty soon after what's, that. What's the game plan? So you're gonna go get this, get this, get this win. Yeah. What's up after that? And then if I can't get for the NABF, so for the WBC's uh, intern belt then I will go ahead and try to fight for the for the world belt for the NABO for the WBO. What's uh what's your weight like? 112 so flyweight. Flyweight. Yeah. What 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 what's what's flyweight looking like? They're like competition? Like yeah, flyweight. I mean there's a the the thing about being a smaller weight class is there's a lot of girls. There's a lot of Hispanic girls and there's a lot of girls from Mexico. There's a lot of girls from like Japan and stuff because we're small we're tinier. So it's it's there's a lot of there's a lot of You're not gonna run out of Yeah, we get higher, it's a lot more difficult for sure. because there's only so many and then they wanna wait for the big fights, so it gets a little complicated. But for us there's fights on fights on fights. And it's pretty packed. So there's there's girls there and they're all ready. And how's it working with uh Golden Boy? You guys you guys sit down and have your meetings, strategize about Yeah, know. we have a we had a strategy going in and we had to postpone everything because of the baby. And then now we're kind of picking up where we left off. So it's basically kind of a deal. It's like, look, we could have gave you a few warm up fights, uh -huh. but you decided to get pregnant. So <laughs> you have to that pick up where you left up. off, you know? Right. And it's like, we're going to yeah, try to work with you as much as you can. Cool. And I was just like, cool, because to be honest with you, I've been boxing for so long. I do worse with the with the lesser than opponent. When someone's, right down, right, right, yeah, right, right. when someone's sloppy and like the testers that they give right. you, they don't make me look good. I'm not, I, I want, I'm better with people that know how to fight because it makes me, iron uh, even, iron. yeah, it makes me better every time. So I look better with better people. So I didn't mind it. I was like, Will this fight be on uh, anything? Yeah, I was supposed to, well, all my fights in my contract are televised, so I have to have them televised. But there's, there's something going on with the zone and Thursday night fights with Golden Boy and then Ring TV. And I think right now they're trying to figure out exactly what networks they're putting on. But for sure right now it's ringtv.com is one for sure that they're giving us. And then they're, I think they're still waiting on the zone to- I've watched you on that before, right? Is it the zone or Dazzin? I can never, it's Z -Z. So I keep hearing the zone the most. The zone. So That's like what I hear the most. Yeah. I, I, but I, I hear it all. But I hear Dazzin. it all. Like, he, yeah, I don't even know, but DAZN, so they're waiting on DAZN to come back, and I think they might have, like, another network, because there's some good fighters on there, and I think Golden Boy's just trying to figure out where they could. Which, which, which way to get yeah. the most eyes. But most, like, uh, most from now on, I'll probably be fighting on DAZN, it's going to be, like, my main network. So you, uh, you get those with you. You are going to fan mode with the boxers? Not really. No, because I grew up with, like, all the guys, you know, every all the guys, I know everybody except probably, like, Canelo I've never met, and... Ryan? Yeah. He's a baby. <laughs> I know Ryan since he was, like, 10 years old. I remember telling that kid, I remember telling him, I was like, you are going to be super famous, just don't get anybody pregnant and keep boxing, yeah. is what I told him. Because he was awesome. young, yeah. um, and sure enough, I remember he walked up to me a lot, like, a lot of like, remember you told me I was going to be famous? I was like, yeah, I remember. Yeah, Ryan was a baby. Uh, I think he has a lot to learn, and I think uh, social media got his head pumped up a little bit, but he's humbled himself. I think he realizes that he still has a lot to learn, and he's kind of trusting the process. Yeah. Um, I think he kind of, anything he had going wrong, I think he's learning how to fix it. Huh? I did. Yeah, I watched, yeah, I watched him. I, I wish he would just bend his legs, you know? Uh, it's my thing. I just want to, like, grab him and be like, bend your legs, dude. Bend your legs. But I see, I see him. He's yeah, 
uh, way back know. here with that chin. And yeah, that, 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 I see a master yeah. improvement, man. And so if he continues and he gets matched well. Yeah, he's learning and he knows that he needs to learn. And I think that's kind of what was missing. Because when you think you know it all, it's, like it's a problem. Do you feel it though? Do you feel that? I mean, you're among, you're among great, right? The camp, you're both boy, oh. right? <laughs> yeah. Canelo. It's, it's cool. Like like when, you're, when you when you're great, I don't know if you really see the other greatness. Right. That's what I mean. They just big, right? The first time that I was like, man, this is cool, was because I love Andre Ward, right? And I that was one of the reasons why I like wanted to go to Virgil, but I never thought I would be around Andre Ward a lot, you know, because he's his own thing, you know. Um, but I remember it was like Andre Guerrero, Andre Ward, Kid Chocolate, Amir Khan, me, yeah. uh, Mario Barros, and like a few of the other Mario. guys. Yeah, he's from uh, yeah, San Antonio. Yes, that's what it's right. He's a bad man. Yeah, he's I call him bad man Barrios. What about his sister? His sister's nice too. Yeah. I saw her. I'm, I've known her in the amateurs and stuff, but I see her. But What's her uh, Selena or Sydney? Um, I want to say Sydney's all time now. Yeah, Selena. Yeah, Selena. I think. But um, my girl's uh, Yeah, she's from Colorado. Yeah, she's from Colorado. She's like Colorado. Yeah, she's from 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 Colorado. And I like that kid, yeah. good. But I remember we were in the gym and everyone was just like working out and doing their thing. I, Joey Spencer was there. Right. So there was like a lot of people and I was like, man, like this is crazy. There were like a lot of people here. Like and you, when you go home, you know, you lay in bed with your husband and your baby, is it surreal sometimes? Or, or do you feel like, oh man, I'm 29. I, I, I need to, do double the work because I need to get to this point. Yeah, are you, are I think you, that's more my, yeah. I, think that, I think that's kind of my, but that's my, my nature, way of though, right? thinking yeah. my whole my life, like it's not good enough, it's not good enough anymore, anymore, right. anymore. And I, I think that actually the, act, the thing that keeps me a lot more content is that I have a baby yeah. now with my husband. So I think it kind of keeps me centered. Like this is, you're in a good place right. and, and you're moving along the way you're supposed to be moving along. And it helps keep things in perspective for me and uh, not so overwhelmed with what I need to do and what I need to do. Because uh, I think I, this is the happiest I've ever been. And happiness is the key to success. Right. And, and I've heard that plenty of times. I've heard that growing up, that happiness is the key to success. And if you're not happy with yourself, you're not going to do well. Are you and happy with yourself? I, I am. And I think yeah. this is the happiest and most content that I've been with me, not mm -hmm. boxing, but with me. Yeah. And, I, and I've never had that. Because boxing was always my identity. And I think that now that I'm, I'm, I'm so happy with me, my baby, and my husband, and the life that we live, and how blessed I am. I work, I go to boxing for a living. That's yeah. what I, I get to box for a living. And I have an amazing husband, a beautiful baby, and I find it just moving along the way with a, with, signed by a major promotional company. Um, still, you know, if I need something, I can call, I can get it. I have sources, and I have a voice in, in my world. And I think this is, the best that I'm going to look. I think people haven't seen me yet, really the way that they should. I know for sure, uh, I know that my first few fights weren't the best ones, but I really wasn't in a good place mentally. I was, you know, in and out of stuff, trying to figure things out, kind of holding my own ground, and uh, it was a lot to handle, and I don't think that my performances have shown the type of fighter that I, that I can be, and I think that people are about to find out. They're about to find out when I stand. Yeah. Yeah, I think being, 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 my wife said, uh, she's uh, excited about this one more than any other show, so yeah. give Rosalind a shout out, man. Hi, Rosalind. <laughs> she said, I'm excited about this one. Thank you. <laughs> you, could add something, you could add another thing to the list. First, our first uh, female uh, guest on the So Fox and Pop Pack. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm excited, man. Uh, I'm, I'm so excited that you're here. I'm excited about the future. I think. You know, touching on that self-awareness. When you figure out who you are and what makes you happy, and you're completely happy with yourself, I, like I mean, I tell people all the time, I love being me. All the shit that I've gone through, everything that you know, I've experienced, all the mistakes that I've made. There's one thing that I know for sure: I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be, doing what I'm supposed to be doing with the people that I'm supposed to be doing with. And when you can have that, that's why I never I never understood the cosmic accident people, man, who don't think this thing 
is by intelligent design. When she said, uh, she just, no, I wasn't looking for Rudy, I just happened to right. go there. And then, yeah. you know, I, I, this and that my, and this, my, because if you take away one of those things. Her dad going to do that gym. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, All those little things. Accident, really? Picking mm -hmm. up a bar, man. Those Picking things keep me gloves. calm. Yeah. yeah, when I think about those things, those things keep me calm. Because sometimes, I, you know, you freak out, and you're just like, I'm going to do it. Can I do this? Because no. I, I put a lot on my plate, you know, and oh. I feel like they say that way. Do you get overwhelmed? Yeah, yeah, I get overwhelmed. They say, you know, if your dreams don't scare you, right. you know, and they do, you know, they terrify me. And it's just like, but this is what I need to do. This is what I got to do. And if I don't do it, something's wrong, you know, something's not going right. So I feel like for some reason, that's what God put in me and everything always lines up to be that way. And how, it's how, always been that way. How, 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 how important is your faith? Yeah, my faith is big. Um, and it's it's something that I've it's self taught and uh, self recognized self recognized. My parents were Catholic, but they didn't raise us in church by any means. There was no church, but I went. I started working after my dad got mad because I didn't go to rice. <laughs> I started working part time um, as a, a dental assistant, right? So I was working from like eight in the morning to like one, and I would run in the mornings. And after that, I would go do some homework because I was working class online, and I'd go to the box and do my five. That was like my process for a few years. Mm -hmm. And I met this lady at, at work, and she was always so happy, and I was pissed off all the time. And I was always like, <laughs> mad. And I was always, like, always mad. And I was always in a bad mood. What's place. wrong with you? <laughs> and, that's a, you know, and that's been a thing all my life, like having to struggle with, you know, I'm learning now when they say that happiness is the key to success, right. and I didn't really understand it. And uh, I was younger, and I was like, I asked her, I was like, why are you so, I still remember her name was Elizabeth, I was like, why are you so happy all the time? And she's like, because of God. And I was like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Next. You know, I was like, I thought that was going to get some real answers, you know? And sure enough, after a while, I was like, you know what, I'm just going to go to church with her. And wow. that's kind of how it started. So I started going to, it was a non-denominational church. And I started going there, and uh, I, it was, I, I felt like I kind of started to figure things out from there, and it's always hard to keep faith because everything gets crazy and life changes yeah, and you forget. Close, yeah. yeah, and it's been the consistent thing in my life that's kind of kept me when I start to freak out and not feel well. Those are things that I have to remind myself that um, this is exactly where I'm supposed to be, and I try to have to remind myself of all the stuff that has happened and the things that I've gone through, things that I've made through. It's, it's been crazy. My life's been nuts. So I, I definitely say that faith is one of the biggest things that, that you know, all the way from walking to the gym to having a baby, you know, everything in between has always been exactly what I needed to do, whether I, or not I liked it. And it's always been boxing. Wow. <laughs> Surrounded with boxing. So. Look, it has been a hell of a show. <laughs> and we, we're honestly, we're an hour over. Oh, uh, <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, we could probably, we could probably, oh, I could do, I got a million questions, but I'm sure you guys have a busy day, and the baby, uh, uh, the baby been good, man, I told you it's good, right, yeah. you only cried like once, so, so, so when we get that time, I'll, I'll kick that ass, don't forget about us, we can do a little, a little run, too. I don't know, don't be getting on Hollywood, I'll be here, I'm talking about, that woman, smiling about God, According to my faith, it's because when you're uh, living in your purpose, that's how I ain't gonna worship. Yeah. Right? So, stay worship. Right. So, like, we can't spend our day in the church and the mosque all day praying because it's not your job. It's when I said about the man and the woman, they got, no, I can't do what you do. You can't do what I do. We got different, it just don't block me. Well, taking care of your son is an act of worship because that's your job, right? Boxing, how it worked out, this is this is part of your thing. Now, who knows? I'm 43-year-old 40, Marlene. Who knows what she's done, learned, and added to, to life, to people's lives, to whatever, but it's, it's an act of worship. So when she walking around smiling, yeah, she's in a, she's in, I'm doing the thing I'm supposed to be doing. Why, why am I not supposed to smile? And that's what it is. And sometimes, you know, because life ebbs and flows, you, you lose that, especially in a marriage. You know, I've been, me and my wife been together 18 years, and, and we have at it, of course, you know. But then sometimes you just smile and you say, I'm right where I'm supposed to be. 
Because without her, who? I've been here, 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 and here, right? She done had to hold me up through some heavy, heavy shit. And vice versa, hopefully. You know, but it's, it, that's, that's, that's why it's important to recognize that intelligent design and who's, who's ahead of this thing and, and walk in that. And then you can smile and laugh and, and the, the crabs you're talking about and saying you don't deserve it. Nah, maybe not one. Watch what you get. Yeah. That shit ain't right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and you keep moving. So staying grounded, man, and being uh, a marriage, that's, that's, that, that's completely part of God's purpose for each one of us. Because uh, without it, we'll cease to exist, right? So you need that on a very basic level. And, and, and using your voice and saying, I like the fact, I, I'm enjoying this conversation, I like the fact that you're feisty and got a little, you know, eh, I ain't got to please you. You know what I'm saying? I've got to please me, i got to please my husband, my son, yeah. what I'm doing in life, and God. That's it. That's it. I ain't got to, don't be an ego man, but I ain't got to sit in and shut the job. I ain't got to do it for you. And I can still keep on going, man. So yeah. I'm going to still be rude. Yeah. We still go. I'm gonna still be rocking. Abel tell you, me and Abel got to know each other, man. He didn't like me at first. <laughs> I have that effect on him. No, no. Uh, but yeah, man. I'm, he knows I'm rooting. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. They get used to the haters because the more, the more times you win, the more fights you win. Well, they need a job. They got Plus, if you don't have enough haters, you're doing something wrong. Yeah, yeah. You, 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 you got to You got to employ them. Yeah, yeah. They, they need to do their job, so keep on moving. <laughs> you know what you're doing, man. We're, we're just hugely proud of you. We take a lot of uh, a lot of joy watching you perform. Thank you. Uh, you, you're definitely uh, a force to be reckoned with, and you have a great future. Uh, April 25th, Houston. Check her out on RentTV.com. She's going to be going up for another title. Uh, you want to plug your gym? Where's your gym located at? Um, seven six seven <laughs> Shepherd Drive. Low no Athletics. We got Lady yeah. Box Academy out of there. Yeah, and um, if anybody, I I usually do everything on Instagram more than Twitter and Facebook. So if Mar far, yeah, it's Marlene underscore Esparza, and that's where like I let everybody know. So as soon as they if they add another network. Or my next coming fight, uh, we're the first place where it goes. And we, and yeah. we share all your moves whenever it yeah. comes up. Shout out Coach Ruby Silver, yeah. Coach Amy. And his cat, TJ. His cat. Yeah, he's like, don't really shout out his cat. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I enjoyed this. Yeah, it's and, great. And, and, Listen, all you little <laughs> girls out there, this is the truth. Yeah. This is the truth. You continue to follow her, and I look. Support each other. This is gold. This is gold. People don't realize you yet. Uh, you're going to gain a lot of insight today to what it takes to be successful, what it's like growing up. Because you know, man, a lot of these girls, they come, they come, uh, you know, dads always working, moms working and taking care of the household. They can never imagine having an opportunity, being a, a medalist, uh, you know, man. signing a deal. I know, but to think that in a nutshell for them, like, before I got signed with Nike, I had duct tape on my shoes. Mm. So it happened. That's the deal. That deal you in. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm all in. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if you hate on her, then it really shows the type of individual you are. Yeah, we ain't going to give them more, because, no more shine. Because the girl with them, I've got a name. I'm going to start saying that. This is, I don't know where he This is. is this is a testament of what hard work, obsession, commitment, drive, drive, character, all the good shit. Yeah. Good. Without all of that, she would have never been on some podcast. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. you coming. No, thank you. I appreciate it. It's good. Cool. It oh, now I got a little to say. Oh, yeah. 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 Let's get it. Hey, we're going to do uh, ice. We're going to do a show for ice tournament, man. Tell this story and, and bring it on, man. Thank you on Facebook, Thank Instagram. Facebook. Appreciate it. H Town. Marlene. That's a wrap. Yeah, that's crazy. That was two hours. I didn't even know. I, I well, started looking at the time. I was just worried about the thing. Yeah, he's got to get clean. I'll tell you, what. Sure. <laughs> All right. is right I tell you yeah. what, I always thought, I was, I was coming here to chop it up with this box. I had no idea it was going to come up with all this knowledge.
bro. And what we do is because this is this is our thing. So it just comes out, man. Yeah. Just speak. And, and, and that's what it's about, man. It's about that platform for people to say everything yeah. you say. I man. bet you they looking at Marlene not like, damn, she really is smart. She just no game looking down. <laughs> you make people say, uh, uh, know your story, man. Yeah. Man. All right, Marlene, we're still alive. Just say uh, we appreciate you coming in, and uh, we'll catch you on April 25th. Awesome. This is her husband back here, and you wanna you want you wanna get him on there real quick? Yeah. Look, look at this. Say hi. There you go. Hey. Say hi. Look at him. He's such a happy baby. He did a great job today. All right. That's a wrap, folks. Oh shit, who we got back here? Houston, the hitman. <laughs> what up, what up? Mike, what's up, brother? Good seeing you.